wonderful detective RPG, Disco Elysium. Let's continue. I'm ready. As mentioned, we just got done with the karaoke here. Didn't go that great. We're not doing too good in our health either. We got a ton of charges for morale boost, but I'm going to hold off and probably wait until we go to bed to try to address that. Got a couple skill points to spend as well. I'm kind of holding off on those until we see a better opportunity to utilize them. So perhaps this will be one, actually. I'm pretty sure I haven't been able to see through this window correctly yet. I just keep staring like an idiot through it. Yeah, it's still locked. I could give this a try. Perception bonus again. I bet I've got some clothing I could wear that could boost that up too. I really wish you could sort these by boosts type. That would be really nice. I also just totally forgot what this is again. It's perception, right? I'm pretty sure it's perception that I'm looking for. But I don't think I'm gonna get it. Wow, there's a minus one to perception. I think we've even gone through this that very process pretty recently. I'm trying to find this. Was there like speed that I could use that would boost that? Yeah, I could go, I could, I could take some speed again. I don't know about that though. I've already taken speed once. I don't know about getting myself addicted to that. I think maybe I'll just go ahead and take another perception skill point. That's probably not a bad idea. Do I have something that's, oh, you know what? Yeah, good call. This freaking hat. Stupid ass hat. Ruining everything. There we go. That's the right hat to wear for this. And then let's do that perception bonus level up. I mean, that's a fine thing to have pretty high of a level on. I don't mind that one bit. There we go. Okay, that should, that should do it. There's a yellow ribbon tied to one of the branches. Light yellow, faded with time. A tiny splash of color in the blackness of the thicket. Hanging from it, a bronze key. I love keys. Someone hid a key in the bush and attached a yellow ribbon to make it easier to find. It's close enough to latch up there. Only one can slide it open and just take it. Surely not a coincidence. I don't want to say this out loud. I'm the only one here I don't want, that I want to know is aware of that. Someone's hid a key in the bush. I need your guys to hand the key to me. And I need a fatty to get I need fatty to get his feet amputated because the smell is killing me. We can't always get what we want. God damn it, Dennis, you know I can't help it. His whiny voice is in deep contrast with his stature. Sorry, fucko, these guys won't help you. Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. Oh me too. I'm sure this is gonna go well. With a loud thud, the old man stands up, pushes the window open, grabs the key from the Hawthorne branch, and slides it across the table to you. Thank you, Theo. <clears throat> the key is brass. Workshop spare is etched to its bow. Bow, I think it's bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. Come on, man, we were just having some fun. Where's the harm in- I'm tired of listening to your shit. Thank you. Don't thank me. The old man th takes out his pack of chewing tobacco. I don't give two shits about your key. There's a silence around this man's words. Unlike Titus, they're afraid of him. That's the type of respect he commands. Man, man, man. Thanks for the 14 months. Appreciate it. Welcome on back in. Hobo cop rides on. Does anyone know why this key was hanging right outside the union box window? Didn't even know it was there. The man looks at the key in your hand, then around in the room. Boys? No idea. Never even seen it. Someone must have hidden it there before this room became our place. I wonder what doors does it open? It's an older building, who knows? The shrug is disingenuous. He's intrigued if only for a moment. Well, all right then, finally knocked that out. There's probably another perception check we could do too. Yeah, I'm doing a little better today, Ariel. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna... I'm just gonna leave Hobo Hat on, fuck it. Why not? So, we could go to bed in the shack that we've uh, acquired. That seems like a pretty good idea. I kind of want to go up and talk to what's her face again. Classier. See if she's got anything else to say to us tonight. Because we talked to her, I believe it was last night. We'll see if she's even around today. I'm hearing some bumping grooves around somewhere. 
see if there's a check on here again. Nothing there, okay. Let's go have a look upstairs. Oh yeah, that's a possibility. Certainly a possibility that we could very well use that uh, key up here on this door that we found on the roof. Nothing on the window. Let's go outside real quick. Hell yeah, Melted Sith. Thank you very much for watching the whole thing. Appreciate it. Well, it's a hell of a lot to go through in a week's time already here. Hey, Colossier. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions pertaining to a murder investigation. I could try this volition check again tonight. I still have this skill point to spend. And I bet, yeah, I could use Paraladin. Although, again, I don't want to get too dependent on any drugs here. This is a volition check. I do have a volition bonus with the Curious here. Could maybe try that out. Um... I'm willing to just go ahead and try. First of all, I want to see if the uh, key maybe unlocks this door here. Kick the door in. That's not going to work. And push still does nothing. Very sturdy. Okay, yeah. There's no chance we're going to kick this door in. Blisk! Thank you very much for 19 months. Appreciate it, dude. Welcome on back in. Looks a bit like a straitjacket, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and level up Volition here. Give it a whirl. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions. Pertaining Ooh. to investigation. Let's go. Good day today. Soft, light brown eyes look back at you directly into the space behind your eye sockets. You see the smoke rise from between her painted red lips. She's beautiful. I have bad news for you. You know these guys? Who, me? Yes, you. He's talking about you, you boring stiff. You too. He's talking about logic and drama. What did I do, says drama. These guys are compromised. She's got them singing along to her tune. The little bleeps and bloops you trust for info, you can't trust them anymore. Oh my god. Believe it. Which ones exactly are affected? There's no way of knowing. At the moment, I'm afraid it's best to assume all of them. Bullshit, man. I ain't compromised, says electrochemistry. Especially that guy. That guy's the most compromised one in here. No fucking way, man. I just want a drag of that sweet menthol, Ziggy. Really? Quick, tell me what's under her jumpsuit. Glory, truth, softness, protect her. She wants you. <laughs> I take it back. You got it. He's got it pretty bad, but this next guy's on another level entirely. She likes you. The crown head is a boring condom. He's jealous. This is human nature. How does this happen? How did all of these does through subtlety? What can I do? There's nothing you can do about it. You are how you are, and she is how she is. Things will go as they do. Can't you turn them normal again? Nope. Well, what use is this, then? It's better to know you're being played than to be played without knowing it, is it not? Does this mean she's been lying to me? I think it's safe to assume, yeah, Miss Thes Mr. Thespian here hasn't been speaking up. If he were, I suspect there would be pains to her truthfulness like this. She is the lady most fair and just. In his defense, to reduce him to such inadequacy, she probably had to employ half-truths more often than outright lies. That is correct. And omissions, too. Can I trust that guy? A little. They're all still of limited use, interpreting things to the best of their ability. Maybe they add flair or something? I wouldn't know. I don't add flair. But when it comes to assessments of character and factual accuracy, they are not to be trusted. Not with her. Can I trust any of them ever again? Don't be melodramatic. You can trust them, just not with her. A light green speck in imperfection on the outer rim of her right iris. It sparkles. What is her plan? You can't draw a sound conclusion. The, the one who usually does says, She may want to control the information rollout, not to become a suspect. She may have a past she's escaping unrelated to this case. You doubt it's something truly insidious. See, it's oddly moderate. Probably compromised. I've been talking to myself long enough. Let's get back to it. Don't worry. It's only been four or five seconds. You got this. Hmm. Yeah, let's get right to the point. Miss, are you manipulating me? The silence broken. She exhales a little cloud of smoke and says, God, no. Oh, good. Okay. 
Well, that's that bad. Problem solved, man. I was worried. She says she didn't do it, guys, so... Ah, we're in the clear. Okay. Woo. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Did she mind fuck me? That was that was me mind fucking myself, I think. The tour dip? Hello, welcome on in. I I can't oh the that tour dip guy. I can't I can read names. Anyway, hi. It's a good time to be here, man, because we're about to go to sleep. All right, except not in here, though. This isn't where we go anymore. We go to a shack on the river that an old woman gave us for free because she just felt like being nice. This is not much further than we've been on YouTube. No, this is, in fact, if you... Uh, well, actually, it is. Damn it, I just realized, yeah, you're only on part three on YouTube. This would be what is effectively part six. So... A little further. We're going to go ahead and get out of here and head on over to the river again. Nothing's happened with the key. Oh, wait a minute. I need to go open the blue door in the kitchen. That's what that's for, dude. That's 100% what that's for. That's got to be it. Sprint there, hobo cop. Secrets await you. Try the workshop spare key on the door. It fits the dimple lock. It takes a bit of effort to turn it after all these years, but then the lock clicks. Dust rises before you like mist. A tomb haunted by regal spirits from distant ages. No, it smells like engine grease and cut wood. A workshop. Yeah, that makes sense. Green orbs. Dude, I'm about to cross over on Hundo again. The pinball says Franco-Nigerian. The theme is horse and swords. Centennial Man. This pinball is white Deora. The back glass shows a female figure in mourning. A note, NB. The spare key is tied to the bush outside the corner room window. Oh, thank you. Money. Yo, get loaded up in here. Yo, right, yeah, there's a pinball machine here. This small elevator is dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The Latiste cage is open, inviting you to step inside. It smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There's a, a control panel to your right and just enough room for two people to fit in. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last Maintenance, 10 July 88. Look at the elevator controls. There are large, like, rectangular buttons. French words, and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. What were you used for, elevator? The deep scratches on the floor suggest it was used as a freight elevator for transporting heavy machinery and one man. Let's go up, dude. Yo, fucking elevator. Okay. Okay. And it worked. And it didn't kill me. Small windows taped shut with black plastic. You can't see outside. Boxes of tools and replacement parts line the shelves. Pond jugular. Thank you for the bits. Appreciate it, buddy. Ooh. Yo. Pinball maker's coat. Empathy and hand-eye coordination. No negatives there. Let's do it. Ah, oh, hell yeah, man. This is the look. He's got the look. He's got the look. Mm-hmm. The pinball machine has been taken apart and gutted. So this is where they brought faulty pinball machines to fix them up. A long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now. Looks like they gave up on fixing this pinball machine at some point. Yeah, pinball hasn't enjoyed a heyday for 15 or 20 years. This used to be a pinball workshop. Used to be a pinball arcade here. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. And it's been forgotten. Now there's only one working machine in the main hall. The rest is lost to dust. But then it went bankrupt. 
Your skin crawls from making the connection. Could this mean the whirling in rags really is part of the doomed commercial area? It would mean that. And Garte would not like that. He should probably be made aware that his establishment is part of the neighborhood ghost story. Oh, snap. Ooh, footprints. Hang on, I need a big gulp of yogurt here. I gotta get my proteins. Mm -hmm. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Someone's been back here recently. <gasps> the dust has not been settled again where these footprints have been made. The displacement in this dusty hell tells a story. What does this mean? Neither the footprints nor the dust speak their secrets. But you know, it means that someone has been back here. Crouch, study the footprints. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to, de hard to determine. The sole could be bigger than vamp. The soles have left a pattern. Uniform horizontal lines. Hey there, Hinda. One person has been here. Gone back and forth. The tips point both ways. The footprints go up the length of the room and back down. That's all they do. Doesn't look like the odd soul. The footprints are of one type. They don't congratulate you for correctly recognizing what type they are not. This, do this doesn't look like the worker's boots from the hanging, does it? The footprints do not speak. They simply exist here, a product of the dust just as the footprints outside are a product of the mud and apparently different shoes. All right. Hmm. There's a tiny hole in the wall. You see a bedroom on the other side. You can almost see the shape of a man and a woman writhing inside. Bottles lie around everywhere. You lean closer to the people instinctively. I bet they're doing something quite unnatural there. Sensationally unnatural. Jake Toady. More adventure of Sir Chicken Digby Caesar. Man, I wish he had given me that option. Oh, it's this. This is the barred door you tried to kick in before. Lightly punch the door once more, just in case. The door shudders a bit as though it were laughing at you. Unbar it. That's that's discouraging. All right, cool. Wonder if Classia will think anything of our having come through the other doorway here. Jeez, it's Chris. It's so good. Yeah, thinking. absolutely. It's been so fantastic, and it just keeps on giving. So glad to keep playing it. All right, so this is. The upstairs of Classia's room, which makes a lot of sense. Doesn't appear to be anything else we can do up here, but maybe we can go tell Garte about the fact that his business is clearly cursed. I think we've got enough time in the night left where I'm pretty sure he's not going to be going to bed yet. Let's go talk to him real quickly. Hey, man. Oh, I got to talk to Lena, too. Tell her I found her husband. Oh, yeah. I hope you really enjoyed yourself up there. <laughs> what a cathartic experience. Because for the rest of us, that really sucked. I'm sorry. It's safe to say this is about your karaoke performance. You don't understand my performance? Those high notes? I purposefully shred them to convey a strained, wore-out sadness. I get it. You were purposefully shit. So original. I'm not letting anyone up there again, ever. Now, what did you want? I saw another thing at the whirling. Another thing? Great, I love those. Garte, what if I told you I got into the back room behind the blue steel door? Oh, okay, well, I did hear you make noise back there, so good for you. He controls his excitement well. It takes a lot of willpower not to ask. Obviously, he's been wanting to know what's behind the door. Aren't you going to ask me what's back there? Okay, what is back there? Skeletons. A mausoleum of the dead. What's actually behind there? Pinball machines. A pinball workshop. Ah, I knew it! I've always wondered where those machines by the door... He knew it was a pinball workshop. 
They told me that. Oh, there was, oh, they told him that it was. All right. Were there any back there in working order, I mean? Why, do you want to play? Because I might be up for a game. No, I was just wondering. He appears to be making a calculation in his head. If you found pinball machines there, he's wondering about something business-related, about how much money he could make off of one. <laughs> if you're thinking of selling those pinball machines, I want a fat cut. C-sweet shit. I'm a disruptor. Those machines are whirling property, but if it makes you feel any better, I'm not planning to sell them. It wouldn't hurt to get a little life in here, other than a hellish karaoke machine. That one's always causing trouble. Sounds like he cares about the place. He's not going to be overjoyed to hear that it's part of the doomed commercial area. He should still know. You have to be forewarned about these things. Oh, he wanted to know about this too, I think, right? Classier in room three nicked the phone line. Why? Oh, fuck it. I don't want to know. I don't want to know why these degenerates do what they do. I thought we had one good guest in the building. He really doesn't like it being Classier. Uh, well, anyway, mystery solved. I don't like loose ends. Neither do I. Thank you for telling me, I guess. Good thing she pays for her stuff on time. I'll forward her the bill and be done with it. Sounds like she has some money tucked away somewhere. Enough to be a stable paying guest. I have to warn you, I may have discovered that whirling is part of the doomed commercial area. What? Why would you say that? We're at a completely different address from that whole thing. So he knows the doomed commercial area and its address. He thought about this. So you know of the curse. Everyone knows of it. Well, the whirling is listed on the intercom outside as one of the businesses in Building B. Or the doomed commercial area. Now, I've been working here for a long time and that intercom has never been used by the whirling. The Whirling was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade before it failed. It's only a matter of time before the Whirling fails too. Does this look like part of a doomed commercial area? He makes a sweeping gesture. This pre-let revolutionary tile work, these high ceilings, the nice rooms. Well, well, most of the rooms. For 14 years, man, that's how long I've worked here. I've kept this place up through hail and through sleet. Fuck me if some doomed ghost He's done a fine job, too, though he's spoken of the place dismally bef dismissively before the hostel is actually very important to him. You really care about the whirling, huh? Yeah, he sighs. It's slowly growing on me again. It's beautiful in its own way, especially for this neighborhood. I've been trying to keep it that way. Even if it is part of the damn doomed commercial area. You shouldn't be so worried about that label, you know. I don't place much stock in the curse, and so on, but the label frightens the clientele. Who wants to stay at a doomed hostel? Everything's doomed with enough without that. Who owns this place? Some real estate management company. They never come around here, just collect money from afar. Honestly, I think some money laundering might be involved. There's an acrimonious note. It's clear he's doing the real work around here. And who named it Whirling in Rags? Well, I sure as hell wasn't the real estate company. You look surprised. What? It's a great name, I know. Cafeteria managers come up with great names, too. It's from a song. A song? Hail Holy Queen by the Ateniers. Hail Holy Queen of the Sea, he quotes. You're whirling in rags, you're vast and you're sad. Good pick. Good pass. What about those other cafeterias you manage? What about them? One is a basement dive frequented by chain-smoking communists. Can't tell you how sick I am of Krasmusov and Ignis Nielsen and all those other, all those old ghosts. He's hesitating, not sure if he should share this information with you. Encourage him. And the others? The other is a kebab, kebab cart. It's very successful in its way, but it's nothing like the whirling. Well, good luck to you with this place, then. Luck has got nothing to do with it. I need to think about where I'm going to place those pinballs. I have a feeling they're going to help. So if you didn't have anything else you tell me, or to tell me about my establishment, or can we, you know, wrap it up? Also, there's a peephole in the wall. What wall? Upstairs in the secret back room right next to Klausia's bedroom. I found it when I found the pinball machines. I'll have it fixed at once. Thank you for letting me know. <clears throat> I assure you, the whirling does not abide spying on its guests. All right, you've been notified. I'll patch it up personally. Is there something else about the establishment? I hope not. No, all right, there we go. Done deal. I got a lot done. 
tasks accomplished, dude. That's that's the dopamine release I'm looking oh, hello, for. Hello, dear. There you are again. Uh, you never told me you've seen the phasmid. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. No, I really want to know. Well, it was summer. I was building a racetrack out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds. Quite a tall one. Many times my height, I remember. When all of a sudden... What happened? I looked up and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. She shakes her head. I'd never seen anything like it. The reeds turned into a creature. Me bragging about the size of your pinballs again, Barry, you caught me. I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved. Swaying, towering above me, she looks at you. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe, it left, went into the reeds. Did you follow it? I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee-deep in the mud, looking around me. Where did you go? Don't go. Then what? I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk and told her they were looking at me. She chuckles. Of course, she just laughed at me, but I knew what I had seen. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys, that sort of thing. She brushes her hair back. Of course, most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on our first date when I told him my story. You should have seen his face. She smiles. He said my descriptions matched the phasmid down to a T. Its white marble limbs, the way it moved. So that's how they met. This is beyond significant for them. You were on a date? Our first, yes. The old woman sighs tenderly. Tempered by something else, a thought she can't express. Its limbs are white? Not all of them, as far as I remember, but some of them on the inside, like stalks of marble, if that makes sense. How big was it? Hard to say how big they are when you're quite small yourself. It seemed to be taller than I was, but that's probably not the case. Maybe you imagined it? Of course, I've thought about it. But Morel says my report matches with the others, and I'm sure I hadn't heard of the phasmid as a child, nor had my mother or my grandmother. So how did I know what to imagine? I was only, it was only when I started telling my story as a teenager that boys would tell me, Lena. You trying to tell us you saw the Insulindian phasmid out there in those reeds? Get out of here. They'd just give me a cider and ruffle my hair and tell me to stop dreaming, but I saw it. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive whatever I get one. It's just such an impossibly sunshiny day. All right. Check it out. I found your husband. Goodness, how is he? Did he say when it, why he hasn't returned yet? He's fine, ma'am. As I had suspected, he couldn't get back earlier because the water lock on the canal was broken, and he's just finishing up some work. Oh, yes, that's my morale. He's bound to catch a cold staying out there for so long. But I am so relieved to hear that he's okay. Thank you for putting an old woman's heart at ease, if even a little. There are dangers out there. Our aging bodies fail. Her heart won't rest until morale is safely back with her. That's all for now, though. Yet another skill point. How fantastic. Hey, dude. Can't talk to you, I guess. Can't use this door still, either. All right, let's go ahead and get out of here, finally. It's been a productive time. I just noticed that pinball machine in the corner there, too, yeah. The signs have all been there the whole time. I gotta pay closer attention, man. Okay, I think it's finally time to get back to the shack. Back to the shack. Back to the shack. They're catsters. Doing quite well today, indeed. We're very good at solving everybody's problems. That seems to be our role around here, yeah. Developed quite the knack for it. Developed quite the knack for going back to the shack. A little dance. There's a perfectly good tray sitting on the table and you're just gonna leave it? I didn't even see it. A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds, another one of Morel's traps weighed down by some stones to keep it in place. The reeds bend forlornly toward the sand. Some tufts have been crushed. The broken stalks seem like a rebuke. The sound of the city center hums in the east. 
The constant distant song. Louder on this part of the coast. Nearer somehow. There's that cold again. Always the cold. Uh, a renewal. Welcome back. No success with the trap. Lycos! Welcome back in for the tier three again, man. Thank you very much for the 31 months. Appreciate it. Love that auto save. Keep them coming, friend. Thank you for the bear brown, buddy. Thank you for the long term support. Very kind of you. All right. You gotta get back in the middle of things here. I think it was. What is this? I think I've looked at that already. Also this, but I'm going to give it another look-see. Oh, cool. That's nice. All right, yeah, and that bench just has the option to wait for some time to pass. Hello, green dot. This door is closed for today. Time to put the kids to sleep. That makes sense. Primer for small kids. A textbook for the first grade in primary school. On the cover, a humanoid bear is pushing a wheelbarrow full of letters. He's not doing a good job. The letter S is dangerously tingling from the cart while E fell off a long time ago. Children should pay more attention. This is very good. Mm. You hold in your hands the colorful primer. The title reads, a primer for small kids. There's a bear inside. Or involved, I mean. This is exactly what I needed. Oh, thank you, Grammar. Appreciate it very much. And understood. Some white guy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for the year as well. This book will show you the score, get you oriented with these basic concepts you appear to be hazy on. The, anthrop the anthropomorphic bear will give you the lowdown of your life. On what? The alphabet. Every page has one word designating one letter of the alphabet with a faded illustration. Most of them are scientific and cultural principles. It goes as follows. A is for azimuth, B is for boreas, C is for cosine, D is for diamat, E is for ellipse, F is for phlogiston, G is, G, G, G is for gamut. Mm -hmm. H is for homeboy, naturally. I is for icon, J is for jura, K is for collapse, L is for laudanum, M is for Myriad, N is for Nadir, O is for Oriole, P is for Perillion. Yeah! Q is for Quasar, R is for Rhododendron, S is for Sinus, T is for Tricolor, U is for Ultra, V is for Vector, W is for Vorheit, X is for Xylophone, Y is for Istava, and Z is for Zenith. We learned the alphabet, everybody. Trash Moo. P is not for Piss. How dare you? Put the book away. That's it. You know the alphabet now. Didn't even get any experience points for that, dude. Damn it. All right. Let's go to bed. It's pretty late. Time to call it a day. It's in the garbage now. It went away. Oh, this is nice piano. I like it. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Time to shave. Is shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red, hair unkempt. Wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. Give it a try. Like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman, you use the small mirror and the straight razor with some soap to remove all that uncut, unkempt hair from below the nose line. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the beard feels tender, the air brushing against it chilly. Feel your clean shaven cheeks. Clean shaven. They feel so smooth, surprisingly so. A feeling of freshness comes over you as if you just came from a cold bath. Was shaving the right call? 
The water reflects back a vague image of your clean-shaven face. Oh, God. I didn't even notice the portrait. <laughs> Despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, and persistent swelling, you look a little... You do look a little younger. Yeah, absolutely you do. The beardless nature of your cheeks makes the expression seem even more like a terrifying grimace. And we gotta find out a way to stop that. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see a reflection on it. The, expre the expression fixed to clean-shaven face. You're still not accustomed to it. Got a plus one from shaving. I mean, yeah, that's probably worth it again. Still not happening. It won't come off that easy. That makes sense. I do have another point to spend. I probably should have checked my bonuses too. Not that it's going to make that big of a difference, I think, on that one. Maybe Encyclopedia is worth doing. I wonder if that's something I've got a bonus for anywhere. Oh, I do. Look at that. Mega, Mega Binos Prescription Lenses. Gonna give me a big old Encyclopedia bonus. That'll certainly do the job. I'll go ahead and spend the point on that. Why not? I haven't leveled that up yet. Done. Using a thermodynamic expander condenser cycle. Okay. I'm already a genius, I guess. It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate uncontested way of life for our species. Uh, okay. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. Forget about ostentatious orchestrations. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume le million. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Guillaume le million. Guillaume le million. All right, I got it. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music in an open air boit de nuit somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume, Guillaume, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He's saying some bullshit, and he made the, then he made the expression. So I adopted it? Why? Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did? Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make it. Click, click, click. I don't know what sound that is. Sounded like a duck. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega hit, Don't Worry Your Pretty Little Head. Sometimes you like to add finger pistols to the mix because unlike Guillaume de Le Million, you are a police officer. It's your nifty little way to say, I'm armed and dangerous. How long ago was the new? There's a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression looking good on you, or anyone. Two decades if the calendar is to be trusted. Humanity has run around how humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. Anyone else? Or anything else? Like, who am I? Why did I become a cop? Why did I drink myself into oblivion? You have some understanding of the near history of disco, plus the trivia you've picked up along the way. Episodic memory, however, remain remains in the dark. It may never return. You should prepare yourself for that. Does this have anything to do with ostentatious orchestrations? Not really. Oh, I must have just stirred your mind. They're more like a disco rock band anyway. Cool. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be cool. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne quirk smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. It's still a 3% even though I got a plus 2 from knowing the origin. I wonder if I can give myself an electrochemistry bonus somehow. I have a plus one from something already. I feel like I can wear another thing that boosts that. I guess not. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Worth another try, though. Still not happening. Well, fine. I guess that'll do for the night. The bed is comforting, if a bit run down, but you've earned a rest. 
Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. The mattress feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. You barely slept three hours last night. You can do it. It's nothing. Do it for the city. Go. All healed. I haven't gotten a good look at my uh, shaven face. Didn't even bother turning around. There I am. Looking a little cleaner. A little, a little better off now. Not too bad. Let's have a look over here. Right, yeah, nothing else. Off we go. Well, no, nothing Nothing resets on this, right? Yeah. Got it. Off we go. Let's go meet up with Kim. Maybe he'll have somehow found where we were using his extreme detective skills. Yeah, no more chops, I'm afraid. <laughs> Fucking course he did. How'd you do that? Oh, I do want to still convince him of that. So I shaved. Yes, uh, 
I, I, I don't know what to say, perhaps. What? You can tell me, Kim. I'm not really sure about this turn of events. I think the mutton chops might have been a better idea. They sort of seem to cover up some of the... Either way, look good on you. You were saying... <laughs> God damn it. God damn it, Kim. That's not a good way to return to me, man. My self-confidence was already waning. Oh, this. Whatever happened to Guillaume de Mignon, who with his amber mane and sparkling teeth beguiled the tattered remains of the nation? While you suffered and suffered, did he de dematerialize in a cloud of cocaine dust? Or did he simply stand in, the, uh, stand in the corner and melt into the slendering new lines of some starlit Boite de Nuit two years, 20 years ago? Spare a thought for his great ass, too. Or, wait, maybe he became a police officer in Revisha West. Hmm. I don't think I want to do that one. I'm going to have to spend a skill point to unlock anything, so any, any thought I want to lock down is really going to have to be worthwhile. I think I'll probably talk to just about everybody Our again. Friend, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I found that jacket I was looking for, but it's filthy. Could you wash it for me? I can wash it for you, but it's going to take about half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? Hell yeah. I could use a breather before another runny day begins. Yeah, I'll wait. I'll hand it over then and I'll see what I can do. Must say I'm proud of this one, she nods, handing the jacket back to you after 30 minutes immediately pass by. It's pretty nice underneath all that filth. I hope you take better care of it than the last owner. Yo. Is it a decent windbreaker now? Check it out. Pain threshold and half life. Yay, Gorello! Thanks for the 32 months on the pile as well. Appreciate it. Welcome on back in. I'm probably going to give it back to this guy, though. That's the nice thing to do. Hey, kids. I don't really want to talk to you anymore, but I'm kind of curious to see how Kim reacts to you. No? Bye, kids. Kids are dumb. Stupid kids. Where'd the adults go? Weren't they all... They were all chilling around here the other day. Oh, it's, it's way too early for them to be out. They're all still crashed from their hangover. A drop in temperature, an easy flow of air, an empty street. Before you, a thoroughly unjammed, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps, just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened. Across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters fill with the black asphalt. The asphalt the asphalt first laid is gray already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Who are the people who live across the road? A tub water with warm a, to, a tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. Four, eighteen, twenty-one, four, one. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. His boyfriend is on his way home. He brings tins of meat and vegetables with him. Their pockets are heavier with money, but only slightly. Young girls used to come to this bus stop, huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats gave them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. The road with craters... Oh, wait. No, oh, yeah, I haven't read this. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money the vital artery of flow of trade. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away. Tragedy came from... Well, that's... I didn't need to know about that. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. Yes? Yeah, right. We've already talked to you today. Can you show Kim your car? Oh, God. Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Apparently we can't go through there, so I guess we're going back. It looks like there might be... Oh, no, wait. Yeah, that's where they are. I'm not going to worry about collecting bottles today. I've been thinking about it, but that's not going to be a top-tier priority. It looks like somewhere that's accessible, but I guess not. Uh, let's go up here, Kim. 
I want to take you all around to where I was the other or uh, yesterday. I don't know how easy that's gonna be. I don't think much has changed. Maybe he'll be interested to talk to Morel as well. Morel, Morelio, Lolo. Did I do this already? Oh, it's another one of the traps. Checking it over, he said it's just a technicality. The latter, the later it gets, the colder. Remnants of the camp can still be seen in the sand. That's gone. The fire that's gone out. Nothing but locusts. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Empty is all of them, he pants. One more of these and we're done. You've only done one. Bummer it wasn't here. I'm just glad we haven't found some poor cat trapped in one of these. The reeds... He doesn't like this, which I'm not surprised with at all. Oh, wait a minute. There was something there. I should get back up to this thing. I bet I can pry it open. Black Matra. Thanks for the 42 months on the pile. The perfect number. Gotta get my pry bar out. Open these up. Get myself a nose of fed. And five ray all. Hell yeah, dude. Totally worth the extra drip. Now let's click this again to make sure I didn't pass anything up with that. Uh, no. Okay, good. All right, let's get out of here. We're on the run, Kim. It's another runny day. All right, so last time, of course, I used the payphone to somehow dial my ex via muscle memory. Uh, there's nothing up over there. It doesn't look like... I think we should probably go ahead and go back to the motorcade and see what he... Th oh, right, yeah, we got to have Kim here for this. This is perfect. Okay, I'm glad we're back. Glad we're back for this one. I want to examine that again. Let's see what Kim has to say about this guy. Hold on. The lieutenant leans over the corpse and examines his face. Two glassy eyes stare back at him, void of any signs of life. Looks like he's been dead for a while. I'm surprised no one found him before you came along. He stands up and shivers as a gust of wind blows through his bomber jacket. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. You'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk here. It looks south the way you came. That's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? A dead working class man with a bottle in his hand? Don't deceive yourself. You know who this is. We know who this is. It's the working class woman's missing husband dead on the boardwalk. The woman you met at the book stand? Why do you think it's her husband? The leather jacket, it matches his description perfectly. The bright blue lining? Well, he's definitely someone's husband. What do you think happened here? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't, ha if it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. You think he was drunk? Oh, yes. What about alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. What about the kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the pox. Could it be related to the lynching? The kebab? No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. Let's treat this case as a simple, sad accident unrelated to the murder case. Some of us should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt they have enough resources to actually repair it. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure, although there's still the question of identifying the body. From where I stand, we have two options. We can either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. What about field autopsy? A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be a criminal. And this looks like a simple accident to me. I say we should just write down head trauma to the autopsy report and leave it at that. Saves us at least two hours of unnecessary work. But isn't that sloppy, Kim? Maybe, but we don't really have that much time or resources to spare. The guys at the processing will take care of the rest. Dan Camvin. I'm loving it, man. Glad to hear you're playing it, too. Yeah, I know a lot of people have been playing it, though. Thanks for the 17 months. We found him. We should take this case. Absolutely, dude. I'm taking this dead body in the boardwalk case. 
Let's call the Jamrock Library from Kanima, see if we can learn anything about this Billy Mijon. While we're there, also call the station, let them know we're taking this case. Sounds good, dude. Well, let's go tell the woman that we found her husband without confirming it at all. That's probably for the best. It's pretty funny that that's still turning into something more. Just a random hunch on a stranger that we bothered in the middle of her day. Yeah, it's Billie Jean. Billie Jean gets murdered in this game. She's also not my lover. But she thinks that I'm the one. But the kid's not my son. Actually, I might have a son in this game. I'm not sure. Relax, it's not yours. You didn't crash every MC in Ravish All, hopefully. There's a Noland Vincink, an unsuccessful model. Right, yeah, I gotta go show Kim my... my fun car surprise. I found your deadbeat husband emphasis on the dead. That's, that's pretty good. You guys awake and around yet? Yeah, you are. Hey, man. Found your jacket. Tequila Sunset. Washed your jacket. Yeah, it was pretty filthy, though, so I got it clean for you. The look of consternation crosses the man's face. He looks at you, then at his bottle, then back at you. What the fuck are you talking about, Tequila? What the fuck are you talking about? To the bear Rosemary, what the fuck is Tequila talking about? Aye, that's the jacket you stole two weeks ago from the kid you, who was making it with his gal on the beach. That's disgusting. I've never done anything like that in my life. You're both delusional. Thalm, that's medium concept stuff. It becomes abundantly clear to you how this man managed to lose his keys, business, friends, and girlfriend. I'm calling it. It's neurological. <laughs> I went through some dark shit to get this for you. Take the fucking jacket. Agent P. Thanks for the Twitch Prime, dude. Appreciate it. Welcome on from, or uh, into the pile. I'm keeping it, dude. That shit's so medium concept, I wouldn't touch it with a stick, but yeah, I'm sure it will look great on you. It's an okay jacket, the Lieutenant Trugs, if you're into, the, into that look. I got some more booze. Can you tell me the next story now? Hmm. I've got a, a potent pilsner. I don't really want to give him the blue medicinal spirit. That seems like something I should use for something else, but maybe this will, like, kill him or something. I, I wonder, actually, how he would react to getting this. I'm curious. He raises his palm as if to shun you back to wherever you came from. No, no, no. Contrary to popular belief, I enjoy being alive. It would actually kill him. Here, I got a potent pilsner. Not much, but it'll do. He grabs the bottle from your hand and uncorks it immediately. The tale I'm about to tell you is an urban legend particular to Martinez. He lifts the bottle to his lips and takes a long, luxuriant sip. That said, I first heard it from a former bicycle courier in Coron. There are many variations on the basic story, and the details often conflict. What everyone agrees on is that nobody knows the exact nature or identity of the phenomenon. Are you telling the story of the headless- SHUT THE FUCK UP, ROSEMARY! Summer of 44. Seventeen-year-old Gertrude Hitt is walking home from a late shift at the harbor. It's almost midnight. She stops for a cigarette near the canal. Our heroine finds herself enjoying the peace and quiet the canal provides. He looks up to the skies as if searching for peace himself. What she doesn't know is that her peace is about to be shattered. From behind her comes the clattering of hooves. Startled, she turns around and what does she see? A, a, a horse? Well, yes, but it's the man on the horse that's of interest here. A man. The pause is long and dramatic. With no head on his shoulders. Wearing a fallen tracksuit. Searching for the legendary fallen cap that went missing when he lost his head. Wait, I thought the headless fallen rider rode a bull. I thought that he rode a headless pig, the lieutenant says with a little smirk. Well, there are many versions of this story, the most peculiar of which has the headless fallen rider riding in on the back of another headless man. That sounds super spooky. Yes. According to legend, young Gertrude Head had to... Het had to endure years of psychotherapy before she was able to look at a horse or tracksuit again. And she's one of the lucky ones. He takes a sip from his bottle. Gertrude Hett may have been the first to witness the headless fawn rider, but she wasn't the last, oh no. Tell him about the two feminists by the locks. Fuck, Rosemary, they were dating. No one said they were feminists. Everyone already, already misremembers this stuff. 
This wouldn't be the DuPont Delgado case, wouldn't it? You know it? I've read the case file, but please go on. Right. <clears throat> Early autumn of 46. Well, the DuPont and Eva Delgado are fishing near the water lock long after the sun has set. The wind picks up. A sky already dark now blackens. Water starts falling from above, the first cold rain of the season. The women are caught, caught in the downpour. They act quickly. Eva gathers the rods whilst Ola turns around to reach for the tackle box. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. When she sees something, her shriek is so violent that the residents of the nearby apartment building believe lightning has struck. But there is no lightning, only a heavy downpour and the silhouette of the headless fallen rider looming on the horizon. Ola makes a run for the shore, but Eva slips on a wet rock and disappears into the cold, cold canal with nary a sound. The man falls ominously silent for a moment and looks you straight in the eyes and says, her body is never recovered. What happened to Ola Dupont? Word on the street is that she, you know, he makes a finger pistol with his right hand and lifts it up to his chin. Gave herself facial deconstruction surgery. Real grisly stuff. Little penguin. Thank you very much for the nine months on the third, or sorry, three months, three, nine months on the pile. Thank you very much. That part at least more or less corresponds to the case file. See, he told you. The man takes a long, self-satisfied sip. Anyway, that's the story of the headless fallen rider. Pretty crazy, huh? Who was, who was the headless rider before he died? Well, Tequila, that's part of the legend. No one knows for sure. There's a couple of possibilities, though. Some say he was an undercover cop who blew his cover and got beheaded by the vicious gang he had infiltrated. Now he rides, searching for his lost fallen cap, plotting revenge. Oh, headless brother, where art thou? Others claim he was a professional jockey who veered off course during a steeplechase, ended up in somebody's backyard, and got de decapitated by an exceptionally taut clothesline. Personally, I think he was some guy who hanged himself from a really tall tree, and the fall was so violent that his head came clean off. Coincidentally, at that exact moment, a horse happened to pass under him, and his beheaded corpse mounted it, where it remains to this day, but then no one really knows. For some reason, this does strike you as the most plausible theory of them all. Hmm. I gotta agree. Oh, oh, that's his theory. Yeah, your theory sounds the most plausible. Isn't it? All the pieces fit together perfectly. That's how I know it's right. Anyway, to each his own. I've got an even crazier story. Yeah, why don't you go eat shit, Tequila? There's no way you know a better one than that. What about the Kodamamadakwa? It's a magical, self-replicating sound. I have to admit, that's pretty high concept. Still not as awesome as a headless, fall headless rider in a fallen tracksuit, though. Dude, I've got a cooler one. The gnome of Jeroma dissolves its victims with acid. Acid gnome sounds like a stupid, low-concept band name. Dude, I got one for you. The kind green ape. Do you always pick the lamest option possible? All right, fine. A headless jockey in a tracksuit fits right on with this case. That's the reality of the situation for you. You think you got a handle on it? Then blam! Throw some wild shit at you. That's why it's critical to stay wild, well hydrated. True that, dude. Everybody take a sip. Mm. Whatever became of the headless fallen rider? No one knows. Some say he stalks Martinez to this day and can be seen near the canal when the clock strikes midnight. He makes a spooky gesture with his free hand. He won't, though, because it's just a stupid legend. I, I saw him one night when I were right shit-faced. Uh, I want to hear the story of your name again. I don't really, though. What's in a name? Hey, Spiral Boy, you going to share that? <laughs> Gurgles the near comatose man. Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. My actual name is George, but around here, you already know. I've heard enough. I don't need to, I don't need to hear that same story again. Uh, you got any more? I actually do have one, the strangest of them all, but I'll need to fortify myself before I can tell that one. You got anything? I don't have anything. I'm sorry. If you find any, I'll be extremely grateful. All right, good. Oh, the lieutenant wants to talk to me about something. I've been meaning to have a little chat with you about your sense of style. What in God's name are you talking about, Kim? A little eclectic, don't you think? How would you even describe what you're wearing? Eclectic is for pop music with indigenous percussion. You're a sartorial maverick. Uh, superstar casual. 
Well, I can't say it doesn't fit you. Still, you might try branching out a little. You know the expression, the clothes make the man. He's trying to say I should try considering bonuses from different outfits. You're sharp dressing, man. I could be style buddies with you. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, detective. Anyway, we should probably get back to the case. Yeah, seems right. How do you feel about unlocking stuff, though, necessary? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, sorry, you're talking about your build. My bad. Misinterpreted. I'm gonna go back to my car. I'm gonna go back to the motorcade that I left plowed into the water, although I think actually talking to her with Kim here might yield something different. The waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. Kim's presence apparently makes this a little bit more difficult, so never mind. Actually, I need to get out here, because I think it was down below the river, and then... Go for this. I want to say it was up this way. There we go. There it is. Oh! My badge! And my commander's jacket. What? I didn't even realize these were here. Thick blue piece of acrylic covering a thin leaf of paper with the officer's name and rank on it. Next to the writing, you see a man stare back at you. A younger version of you, already disintegrating inside, but still presentable on the outside. A police badge on which you see a photo of a man. I found my badge! At least something good came out of all this. The lieutenant glances at the badge in your hands. Encased between two bur durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the street, gold of Revishal, street grid of Revishal West. Oh, I had a bug last time, did I? Okay. You see a photo, a name, a rank, a document number, the date of issue, and in the lower right corner, your precinct. The man keeps winking at you with his green-gray eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that. The newer photo would look different. Eight, maybe ten years old, the guy in the picture is rather good-looking. Got a nice haircut and is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. And he's winking. His face is already contorted by the expression, although it looks less grotesque on him than it does on you now. The badge in your hand, shi hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. Name, Harrier Dubois. Harrier, that's long for Harry, so you are Harry. Everard was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him you're Harry Dubois didn't. Strange, it doesn't say Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. Not strange at all, your name is Harrier Dubois. Like it says in your police badge. What kind of name is Harry A? It's a, war, it's a wartime name, revolutionary. The kind mothers give their sons during troubled times, like Undying or Boxer or Ironhide. Harry A. Dubois it is, then. Please, please to make, make your acquaintance, Harry A. Dubois. He's not going to call you Harry A. He's going to call you Officer when he's angry with you and, de and Detective when he's not. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it. Rank. Lieutenant Double Yefreiter. What is a Lieutenant Double Yefreiter? The Lieutenant is a rank above Sergeant and below Captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a Lieutenant. And Double Yefreiter? The title of Yefreiter is added to your rank when, de when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, Captain. You have declined twice, thus your Double Yefreiter. There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precincts, the Comptage might be taken, or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank, in your case, lieutenant. Hmm. Heavy duty case solving machine. I thought my rank was drunk. Yes, apparently you've had a rather successful career in the past, and this leads me to believe many, maybe your current situation is only temporary. Thanks, that gives me hope. What is a decomptage? Decomptage is the hierarchical system employed by the Revishal Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. The countdown is modeled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution, which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologists in the University of Konigstein. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are patrol officers, 
then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kinks. Kinks like satellite officers and the additional Euphrata rank I already explained. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. So you've been putting up with all my bullshit because I'm your superior? No, I've been putting up with you because despite an unconventional approach, you're doing good police work. It matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea. And now we've even found your badge. He trusts you for now. Try not to spoil it. Serial. That's just the serial number. Some numbers thrown in for good measure. Date of issue? Four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. A lot can happen in four months, especially in winter. The winters are never easy on you. On that, you are sure. I feel that, buddy. Precinct 41. The 41st is a tough station to work in. You have all the jam rock to cover. That district should have three precincts, but the money is what it is. It's no wonder you are like you are, he thinks. But then again, it's a legendary district and a hell of a station, too. It must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price, McCoy, Berdyayeva, Roberts, Fairbach, Dimitri. Suddenly names from your decomptage flash in your forebrain. He knew all those people, although they're not from his station. It must be big. And you? Is it an honor to work with you? Don't ask him. Ask yourself. Cool. We got our badge. Well, that's pretty big time, dude. Guess he doesn't have anything else to say about the motor carriage, though. It's not too surprising. Glad we came back, though. We got another skill point to spend now, should we choose to. Was it hard we reading that without a weird French accent? Dude... French, like, I, I do scripts for YouTube channels, and every now and then I'll have to read names in, uh, or names of people from different countries in, that are, you know, languages that I'm not that familiar with speaking all that well. I've gotten better at just about every language now at, uh, at reading and speaking the languages because of that, apart from fucking French. Fuck French, man. Like, it's such a weird language. You don't pronounce half the letters. You got a name like R-E-M-I-E-U-X, and you, you say it like... It just feels like the sounds are just falling out of your mouth. That's what French feels like. I got a bone to pick with the French language, dude. Excuse me. That's one brutal motor carriage. Says the young man with that on his back. If I were a real skull right now, I'd Welcome jack it, paint it in palm tree life. livery, then bottom light it neon style. Pierre Le Frank, did you do that exclusively because you have a, uh, a French Canadian sounding name? You French Canadian along with potato? Damn it. Fuck the world, says his slogan. Snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could, like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops heads. Scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. While I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carry, I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um... It's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. He turns to his Man, companion. We're certified skulls right now. Was it a good idea on the lieutenant's part to get into this? Don't even answer that. Just leave. You can always come back on your own terms. We don't have time for this. Let's go. All right. We do need to call the uh, station, though, to let them know we took that other case. Uh, pick up the radio. Oh, wait, no, not that. Push that in. Pull up the radio. Uh, oh, I do need to call the library, too. And I also want to ask her about this real quick. Still haven't heard back from the database people. Try calling again later. Okay, I can do that. Uh, connect to the library. They're closed. Open from 10 to 6. God damn it. Uh, report a dead body in the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. Uh, can you please describe the body? All that stuff. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? Uh, seems like an accident. Welcome back, 
No field autopsy necessary, she repeats. And it didn't, I mean, like, that It always makes me second-guess myself now when there's options like that, but I'm pretty sure there was nothing that would indicate there was any sort of struggle. Kiwi Kenobi! Thanks for the 38 months, appreciate it. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? We did. We found a library card. From Central Jamrock Public Library belongs to someone named Billy Majon. We do indeed have a lead. We will take the case. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. I don't know why I would talk to Sylvia again. But I guess I can try it. Hi, Sylvia. It's the police again. Do you know how my paperwork ended up in the trash container behind the whirling? Well, you tried to jam it down the toilet, sir, clogging it completely, and after I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash thinking you didn't need it. I'm sorry about that. All right, good. <laughs> I'm glad I called her again to clarify what happened with that. That's important information for me right now. Good. Okay. We've got several tasks we could try to complete right now. Let's go ahead and have a look at our, our book real quick and see what we can do. Got to wait for an hour or so until the library opens up to make those calls again. Uh, hold on to the spirits and wait for the signal. Wait a minute. Is it talking about, it's talking about this, isn't it? Oh, I can't hold on to that, though. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Uh, I could convince Suna to cooperate with the Ravers. I could uh, sync the signs with the Noid. I don't know what the fuck that means. Find a tape with a melody for Egghead to make it harder core. Uh, get a cell to talk about her associates. Inspect the traps. There's one more in Land's End, far northeast of the Feld building. I've done that. I could go talk to Everard, actually, and tell him that we got the signatures for him. We haven't spoken to him in a minute. Uh, I'll be okay, Gorilla. I appreciate you asking, though. I don't need to talk to this guy again. Every day, every time I do, I regret it. I haven't talked to this dude in a minute. Maybe he's got something new going on. Right to work. Right to work. Doesn't look like it. All right. See you later, dude. What about you, Manana? I haven't talked to you in a minute either. Hola, one doing Nope. All right. No problem. Let's go talk to Everard. What stats did your new police cloak have? Good question. I think they're pretty good. Yeah. Oh, look at me now, man. Okay. Dude, we can put together an outfit that I'm sure will make, will make Kim proud. Put the red shoes on. All right, yeah, we're looking good. Looking stylish. Toss on some fingerless gloves and this lovely little cap. There we go, man. That's a little better. These are some wonderfully regular pants. Not too tight, not too loose. Moderate in every sense. You'll blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. It's a fashion faux pas. <laughs> I like regular normal things. Those inter interosolary pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call the moral intern on you like this, that's for sure. That's for sure. You are, you're a little more moralist now, buddy. A little more normal, even if you didn't want to. How wonderful. A giant ass print on the pillow and a pattern of coffee rings on the armrest. Someone is habitually chilling next to the radio. Interesting. I didn't even know anyone was, anybody was coming in here. I don't need to do that. I don't think there's anything for me to do on this again. Okay, let's just go upstairs. And out to Everard. I think this is where he is. I don't remember exactly. I think we go, yeah, up and out here, right? And then... Where the hell was he? No, I've never been, I've never been down there. How do you get down there? There's that whole area I haven't been into yet. That does look like a comfy place, doesn't it? Yeah, no, I agree with you. Let's go have a conversation with the 
high net worth man who bends light. Oh. The door is conclusively locked. Never mind. I guess that was a one-time deal. Alright, I think it writes over here. I'm willing to commit to doing this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's in this container. This is not a fishing rod, is it? It's... What is it? Tell me. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois, I hear the meeting with Titus was a glowing success. That's such a relief. Titus can be a handful sometimes. Indeed. I heard you can do any language except French. How about these symbols? Nope. Yeah, no, I... I I exaggerated a bit, clearly. You could show me some Arabic, I wouldn't be able to read that either. Now, what can Everett Claire do for you today? It's done. I mailed the signatures you asked me to mail. The Golden Boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. Of course, I already knew this. My friend the mailman confirmed the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a bright future, and you've proven yourself someone I can trust. Someone I can really do business with. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun. Nothing is off the table. Judging from how happy he is, it looks like you did it. He doesn't appear to suspect trickery. Well done, sire. By guile and deceit, you're in. Hmm. Did you order the hanged man killed? I did not, Harry. Although I am very, very glad he's dead. What do you gain from him being dead? By a war, of course. What do you gain from having a war? Victory, Mr. Kitsuragi. I have victory to gain. We are going to start a war with the Wild Pines group and win before they even realize there is a war. Pardon me. They've trained military people. Aren't you afraid for your men? Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1, and that's just Martinez. With all the unions in Ravishal and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men, 15, or even 50. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They've made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them, the fascists hate them. Even the moralists think they're in bad tastes. Yeah, everyone hates them except ultra-liberals, which happens to be me. How's this connected to the strike? Harry, there is no strike, only war, class war. Or in business terms, a dawn raid. Or, wait, not when you still pay them something, because we won't do that. We're not gonna give no we're not gonna give nothing. We're gonna take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even the damn coffee maker. We're gonna take all of it for the people, and fuck Wild Pines. The word fuck rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. He doesn't, yeah. So that's why you haven't let Joyce in? Yes. It's also why I let that Gamont go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her asshole. She has no chance. What? Tits from her asshole, it's a local saying. Actually, no, it's not. Why are you telling me your plans? Because we're friends, Harry. It doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> How many of you guys are there in the Union? 2,372, he replies like a whip. Plus yours truly, of course. 2,373 is a sizable contingent for a labor organization in Ravishal. And they're all well motivated, at least the ones you've seen. How are you going to find your new independent harbor? Oh, you mean that sort of goods are going to going to be flowing? Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? How am I going to replace all the contacts we'll lose once the poo-poo hits the fan? He avoids swearing, doesn't he? The clients who will ditch us? Harry, we've thought of everything. Thank you, Nate. I appreciate that. Clients would take a well-known multinational conglomerate over a local mobster any day. You can't possibly hope to continue like you have. Clients will leave en masse. Sure, some will go, but mark my words, the company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martinez and to the new competitive contracts we can offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping these containers double time. You'll be surprised to see how fast things go without parasites latching on. 
We'll have our hands free to pursue bold, exotic new revenue streams. That's drugs! It's... <laughs> Drug trafficking. Drug trafficking? Don't be stupid, Mr. Kitsuragi. There are perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical factories on the Samaran Isola. You don't need to be a colonialist about it. All they do is produce far, uh, components to keep the pharmaceutical industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Old grannies, little babes, people with disabilities. That's just the top of the iceberg, though, isn't it? The company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad, has bad optics, may be illegal in some countries. The, de the debarders union, however, we're all about the large volume column. In, in bulk shipping, large volume column is a major buyer, a shark. We're going to transport the living daylights out of those materials, Harry. So your sick kid can get his benefit and your wacky uncle doesn't have to come off ris Risperazole. Benefit is children's cold medicine, usually apricot flavored, and Risperazole is used to treat severe psychosis. And the kids on the street can get some speed and pyrolidin. I'm an old-fashioned guy, Mr. Kitsuragi. I sometimes grab a beer with the boys, but I have no idea about the things you just mentioned. But if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the union took a fantastic share. And I'd keep that stuff far away from Martinez. He's basically admitting to it. I have to admit that's a well put together plan and far removed from you. It's also far removed from my men and the people of Martinez who have put their trust in me. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone ever seems to be interested in. It would only be a small part of the harbor's turnover, just like the harbor is but a small part of Martinez. It would still be illegal. Let's look at the big picture. Martinez as a whole. There are little girls out there with dreams of making music. Young mothers who want to start business. Models who want to walk catwalks and steel welders who want to weld steel. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. We're going to incorporate this place to kingdom come. Everyone's going to be in on the wealth and everyone's going to pull their weight. Let's keep focusing on the drug trade. He was almost admitting to it. Hmm. I'm not feeling a whole lot of... Re well, no, let's not get too far off of it. With, if it me I mean, if it has the word incorporate in it, then I like... Oh, yeah, let's try to persuade him that I'm trying to get in on this shit. Cornist! Thanks for the Twitch Prime subscription. Appreciate that very much. If you start thinking about it like that, the socialist municipal body sort of is like a corporation, isn't it? Oh, I think I just sort of played along with them there, unfortunately. Damn it. All right, I'm going to call him on this. The signatures I got. I know you plan to force them out with a construction noise. Harry. By now, you should know I would never do anything tricky like that. However, if the construction noise and limited street access makes some people consider moving... Well, let's just say there'll be a freshly renovated building near the roundabout where those poor people can finally enjoy a significant uptick in quality of life. I'm talking real affordable workers' palaces. So the village is doomed, the lieutenant says grimly. You were there, you saw the place, a wasteland. There's nothing left. Mark my words, officers. We are going to reset it. Reset. I have big plans for Martinez, and they do not include humans living in those pig sheds under the coast. The land will be used for municipal buildings and commerce. What do you mean? Harry, imagine a youth center supermarket church complex, employing hundreds, no, thousands of people. The coast will be lit up with enterprise and life. All those ruins out there turned into low-income housing. Harry, enough is enough. We're taking this district back. The war was 50 years ago, for God's sake. It's time to move on. Youth supermarket church complex. You really expect me to believe that? Yes, I do. I got the center, I got room for a retail complex, and in four years, four years I'll get the church too. The, weir the wheels are already turning, Harry. The wheels of progress. This post-war limbo, I won't stand for it. There were kids practically playing with their own feces out there. I cannot go on. There's true indignation in his voice when he speaks about the state of things, and even a touch of pain. And then there will be a giant statue of him towering above it all. Will you erect a statue to yourself? I'm not a symbolist, Harry. I'm a realist. My statue will be Martinez rebuilt. Five-story building complexes. Kids off speed and landowners in ozone hating me. That will be my statue and yours. You would look nice as a statue. I knew you were up to something. Damn right, I'm up to something, Harry. I'm going to make the working man as rich as Joyce Messier. That's my job just like yours is to keep peace. This man is silver-tongued. 
Can I ask you about specific union members? We're way past specific union members now, Harry. This is the big time. We're talking about the future of Revishal here. You can bother Leonard with that. He likes to run his mouth on such matters. All right, can I get my gun now? Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. Where is it? An old woman has it, and let me tell you, word on the street is she's a character. This must be the woman who, brought the, who bought the gun from Roy, the one he described as terrifying. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. Crazy stuff, Harry, selling your gun like that. Wild. Anyway, union boys are going to help you fix it. Don't worry, Harry. The, ma the neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the debar... De this word, man, just... Uh, uh, my brain. I'm probably never saying it right either. Debardeaux, union. De Debardeaux. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Who is this old woman? Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry, but she's an old lady. How dangerous can she be? Oh, and she calls herself the pigs. There it is again, the pigs, like Roy said. Not good at all. I, for one, find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a pig. Actually sounds extremely bad, but let's not give him the satisfaction. She was waving it around at people? She's a character. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry, no one got hurt. Might be looking with a, at someone with a serious medical history here. De Baudoux, yeah, that's probably correct, isn't it? He's already set up a meeting! Tonight at 2200 hours near the old fish market on the coast, the one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now back to the fun stuff. Late tonight. Alright, that's it for now. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debar Debardos, Debardos Union. This has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more th fun things to do together, but if you ever feel like bouncing something off of me, my door is always open. I apparently don't have any other questions. Goodbye, Everard. That was certainly something. Got a couple skill points again. Uh, I don't think Kim has anything to say about it, so let's get going. When in doubt, purposely mis mispronounce the word. There we go. Yeah, I'll just make up my own word. Dooby-doo. It's a Scooby-Dooby-Doo. The Scooby-Doo Union. There we go. That'll be easier for me. <laughs> Ruby, Ruby, Will. Well, that could be better. Let's go. Hey, pal. Oh, hey, mister. I need to be back to talk with O'Lear here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. I want to ask well, you about somebody, Leo. Keep coming back. Mr. Ivorard doesn't really want me to talk to people about union guys, but who did you want me to talk about? Tell me about this Edgar guy you keep mentioning. Mr. Edgar is Mr. Everard's brother. Looks a bit younger, he does, but a very smart fellow. Very smart fellow indeed. Away on some union business. Not even in Revishal, they say. Let me stop you there, Leo. I had another question. Tell me about Manana. Union man through and through. Good guy. Very calm. Doesn't do much. Talks to Everard sometimes. I don't know what he does, but it must be important because everyone likes him. I think that's what he does. He makes everyone feel a little better. I get that. Oil for the wheels. Tell me about Measurehead. He's really something. Doesn't talk to much, much to me usually, but when he does, I don't really understand most of what he's saying. Actually, I don't think he would like me running my mouth about him like that. Once he said he's a dragon to this mob fellow who came picking a fight with some union men. I think he really believed Jean-Luc was a dragon because he ran right off. Another time he almost killed another guy, but I shouldn't talk about that. Tell me about the guy in the container. Who do you mean, mister? He's rubbing his nape and looking at you with childlike innocence. You do realize he might just be a figment of your imagination. The fancy guy in a suit in that container over there. I don't know anyone like that, mister. Maybe he's one of Mr. Everard's fancy friends. He knows all kinds of fancy people with suits and pretty carriages. He really feels uncomfortable discussing matter, matters related to Everard with you. Hey there, Ditto. How you doing? Titus is a longshoreman through and through. He was born on the boat, they say. His veins are probably filled with salt water. Nice, friendly old sword, Titus is. I could, but I don't think Mr. Everard would like it very much. You better ask him yourself, mister. Tell me about Rene. The night guard? Oh, he's a peculiar fellow. He's the strong, silent type, you could say. 
We talk all the time, but I don't really know much about him. He plays petanque with my old human studies teacher, Mr. Martin, down at the plaza. I think he's the only fellow who actually old knows old Renee. We lived on the same street their entire lives, even dated the same girl on and off for as long as I can remember. Strange fellows, but Mr. Martin was always real nice to me in school. I remember once... Hold on, Gaston was your human studies teacher? Mr. Martin, yes. I don't really remember much about him. I was a boy back then. Interesting. Cool. Okay, then. Welcome. Oh, you get it! I hope that's close to how you say that. Thanks for the Twitch Prime subscription. Appreciate that very much. Could I get a round of bear hugs if you got them for the new subs and old subs alike? Thank you very much for showing the support today. Very kind of you to do so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't think I've been over here. Oh, no, this is the way to get back over this way. Never mind. I lied. No <laughs> Oh, that's good. I, I'm trying to think of how to fit it into the uh, parlance of the song, though. No one teaches like Gaston, reads like Gaston, tells you what things are in reads like Gaston. That was a that's a callback to the cryptozoologists. So that kind of worked. Almost. All right, still nothing to do in there. Uh, let's talk to... Let's see. Who can we talk to? Who can we talk to? We got a few tasks on the mind right now. Uh, the library's still not open yet. I think we're waiting until 10 o'clock for that. Measurehead probably doesn't have a lot to do for us, but I might as well go ahead and give him a chat while we're here. It's Knock him out. Funny thing. Race pupil. Why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not the first line of defense, I am the last. These Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders, their company is spiritually degrading. <laughs> you pick up on something artificial in his tone like he's putting on an act. This is unlike him, he's usually more himself. There's more to it, what have you got against them? Fine. They have recently fallen under the influence of a possibly sexually perverted female vagrant and a narcotics peddler, it's shameful. Oh, he's talking about Clossier. Find out for yourself, endomorphic blob. Dude, that's a fucking... Put that on wear insults for me, please. That is a hell of a burn. The lieutenant takes a quick note. I think he's talking about Clossier, I'm pretty sure. Alright, I'm not gonna knock him out. Last time I tried to do that, my game actually broke. I think that's the only way to get to this box, though. Not to mention... Whatever the hell's over here. Huh. Nah, sorry, I gotta I gotta keep it at the high price point, Shadow. It's gotta be an elusive bit. Or an elusive event. Three T's! How idiomatic! What the hell are you talking about? Three T oh, one. Where's the other ones? There's T's? What is it? What in the world? I don't know what that's referring to. Oh, the store's name. I see. Yeah, there it is. Why would anyone want to end the stream? I just, I, I prefer to let chaos reign, man. That's how I feel. I don't really need anything in here, and I'm not 100% sure why I came in. There's a skill check. There's also a raincoat I could buy. I wonder if having a raincoat on at any point would be helpful. Hmm. I do like the window displays. This is a nice place. This is where you deposit the bottles, too, which is why I've been coming in before. But I don't need that anymore, because I'm freaking rich. I don't even have to spend any money on rent. This is dope. I feel like a boomer. All this expendable income. Life's so easy. Uh, let's see. Let me think. 
Confront the pigs and get your gun back seems like a pretty good idea, but we gotta wait on that, obviously. Uh, can't call the library yet. Where can we go? I could go talk to this woman about her husband. Ask her a few questions. Oh, she's not here today, damn. Oh, let's go talk to Renee. That container wall was actually insane. That, that changed our entire game. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. The purity of snow always reminds me of the purity of a man's soul. If he's got principles. I understand Jean-Marie meant, meant a lot to you. There's nothing for you to understand here. It is not her death you are investigating. Were the circumstances of her death in any sense unusual? She died of pneumonia in her bed at the age of 79. Where was this photo of you two taken? Revishal Fair of 91 in the Thalberg District. So that was like 60 years ago. A parade was held to honor Guillaume de Leon's name day, and the carabiners marched in the place of honor. Hey, Bernie. You looked happy. This was the happiest day of my life. This is said in such a matter-of-fact tone, it leaves no room for doubt. What happened with you, Gaston, and Jean-Marie? I was 22 when I returned from King Guillaume's Ikera, Ikera, Ikera operation in the south and found my sweetheart in the arms of this wretch. The Ikera operation was a seven-year campaign during which Suzerain Guillaume's army forcefully united the people in the southeastern part of the Petit Continent, collectively known as the Ikera tribes under the Revachelian banner. I won her back, but I was dealing with some issues. You were like a dark cloud sucking the joy out of every living thing around you, and you, you hurt her. Dark Cloud, that sounds unpleasantly familiar. Yeah, it's one of the best RPGs of the 2000s. I, uh, uh, he looks down at his boots, lips moving, but the words inaudible. Those days and memories are gone. He nods and looks, Rene, looks at Renee with something resembling compassion. The old soldier says nothing, but when his glance quickly runs over Gaston's face, there's an odd look in his eyes. I want to try this again. Let's get another composure check. See if there's any bonuses for that in my set here. There's a minus one to composure. Don't take that. There we go. Do that. Hey. Alright, nothing else. I'm not going to do any speed. I can really level up composure. Let me know what's going on here, pal. The purity of snow always reminds me of the purity of a man's soul. If he's got <sighs> the damage morale. Still all you see is an old soldier. Son of a bitch. Oh well. The smiling face just looks crazy without the beard. <laughs> Have I done this bench before? I've done the other bench. I don't know if I've sat on this bench before. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. We can sit on benches after we solve the murder. Let's go. Oh. Got it. The lieutenant's ever gone. Okay. Uh, well, that was pretty quick with Renee there. The woman's not here today. Oh, let's go talk to, uh, what's-her-face. The woman who doesn't know her tits from her asshole, whatever the fuck that means. Let's see what she's got to say about things. Oh, I gotta I got look at this wall again today, too. It's very important. Extremely important that I do this again. Conceptualization. Hold on a sec. Sorry, I know this is probably gonna be a commonplace thing now, especially now that I've got so many items. I really just want to make sure that I don't miss out on any chance to boost up my li likelihood of success. Uh, conceptualization's not really being affected by anything. I'll just go ahead and put a point in there. Level up. Kablamo. Good job. Why does art inspire you so much? It does, yes, but what is art? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, art is the highest form of human communication. Representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwined. Would I fit into the art world? Have you looked in the mirror lately? To be honest, you have the exact features of the modern artist with that wild hair and those clothes. Perhaps you should try to write poetry someday. And, and critique architecture. Is this is architecture also art? Of course not. It's aut it's aut uh, autistum? Box drawing. Masturbation with a ruler and a sextant or whatever they use. 
You should demean and criticize the genteel institution of architecture while extolling the virtues of the pure arts. But what about music? Only the most experimental kind of music is art. I guess I have been feeling critical lately. Yes, you seek substance. No vapid representations and reproductions of social mores is made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Wait, but don't I have to be 100% cop to get the case finished and all that? Quit being so indecisive. What are you doing here? Some kind of indecisive and camp aesthetic now? Strike a bold shade. Go art or go home. Do it. Actual art degree. It's not only your duty to only catch the criminals of the street, you must also apprehend criminals of the painting, pr the printing press and the gallery, the trite and derivative artists and writers of the world. Go ahead and provide savage criticisms, art cop. The world is yours to rip to pieces and reassemble. I gotta uh, unlock a new slot here. It's another copa type, the worst one, the most savage and brutal, the art cop. Nothing's ever good enough for him. Everything is shit. You have to employ an armada of adjectives to depict and demean the mediocrity of the works and visual institutions around you. Really flex that critical muscle until the vocabulary for punishing mediocrity becomes second nature. Here we go. This is still uh, pretty bad. Well, it's still just a wall. Damn it, dude. I really wanted it to be different today. Oh well. This way. We'll talk to the lady again. Joyce, I believe, is her name. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? I found my badge, by the way. By love, you did! She inspects the piece of blue plastic, her eyes scanning from left to right. Fast, observantly, like an electronic printer. She hands it back to you. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant W. Freuter Dubois. I'm glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. Seaweed drips from the badge in your hand. It smells of fish. What can I help you with, Lieutenant Freuter? How about you share your information on the lynching now that you've seen his badge? The goalposts have moved, Lieutenant. In the absence of the badge, I have informed my employer there will be a probe. I cannot rescind that promise. To my knowledge, the drivers are still at the roundabout. I will tell you everything I know when you finish with them. This was your plan all along. My plan is to share information. The only way to do that now is to tell your employers you've kept your end. Which I hope you will, because let me tell you, we are in dire waters. Meaning the information she has will raise the stakes in this game. The sooner the probe is finished, the sooner I can share crucial information with you. I spoke with the lorry men at the roundabout. On the contrary, officer, there are yet camoniors you have not yet talked to. And don't look so surprised. In a time like this, it would be strange if Wild Pines didn't have eyes on the harbor. Go back and canvas for more suspects. Okay. Yeah, why is she moving these damn goalposts? I didn't agree to that. I think she told me about Elysium. Sorry, I can't remember, Groove. Okay, well, apparently there's some more lorrymen in the roundabout that I haven't spoken with. She can't remember that she didn't tell you. Why are you spoiling, man? Who have I not talked to in here? I've talked to... I talked to the nice guy, I think. I talked to the dude that was selling the sunglasses. Who's left? Ruins full of snow. No one lives here anymore. Where can I go? Can't go that way. Hmm... Keep looking around. Oh, hello. Astaz Raj Rajko! One of the finest Shimsk... God, dude! Shimsk! One of the finest Shimsk-made motor carriages ever. An oldie but a goodie. Who drives these? Not many people outside of Grodd and Revishal West, too, it appears. 
Check this out, Kim. A Staz Rajko, KK2. That's a classic model. Never thought I'd see another one repainted after what happened last time. Do I know what happened last time? No, only that the motor carriage is typically baby blue, the colors of Zygmunt the Great, an ancient Zemsk ruler. His banners were famously Zaffir and White. Let me guess what happened last time, Kim. Blue and white are the colors of Zemsk. Someone painted it, got a Zemsk mad, and boom, murder happened. That's, well, yeah, exactly it, more or less, except it was a crowd of them. Tore him out of the vehicle and ran him over with his own tires. They said it was an honor killing Hussar style, that Zemsk community, the Zemsk community protested the trial flying the colors. 5,000 came to protest. Correction, 4,395, the fourth largest public protest of a criminal trial in Revishal. I hate to correct you, Kim, but only 4,395 people were on that protest. Who are they? People were paid to protect. Let's leave it at that. Where did they sentence the killers to? Four years for murder and reunion. The perps were remorseful. Their sorry knocked eight years off the sentence. That's the system. The prisons in the Greater Revishal Industrial Harbor are already full. Prisoners are expensive to maintain. The lar longer the sentence, the larger the cost. Could our hanged man have been the driver of this car? Could it be another Staz Rajko murder? Honestly, that just doesn't seem like the type of vehicle our dead guy would drive, so my initial guess is the two are not related. I've got an opinion on this paint job. I think it looks better brown and black. I'm not going to honor kill anyone over this, but I've seen it in blue and white. It's much better that way. <laughs> I believe it's pronounced like Jamski. Yeah, that sounds right. That's probably how you do it. Thank you for the bits. Appreciate it. Okay. That was interesting. Uh, I must have missed something else, man. I've looked in this lorry already, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't yield anything else. Yeah. Hmm. Can I get up here? Look like I can, okay. Yo, I'm I'm speaking rhetorically, PTH. If you could please not try to actually direct me to exactly where I want to go unless I ask specifically for that. But since you've already put the information out there, I can't help but it, but acquire it. Because that's how that works, and that's why I have to ask people to please stop doing that for the love of Jesus Christ. For the love of our good Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ above. Speed bottle. I don't think I want to use that. Again, we're looking to avoid drugs as much as possible. Right, this woman. If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Snap your fingers twice. Where am I? Who are you? Like a magician recalling a sub subject from hypnosis, you've jolted her back to reality. The smile on her face has disappeared, replaced by the wary aspect of a cornered beast. I was actually hoping you could tell Never me that. Mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in the traffic jam. In the 50s. What's so bad about the 50s? The men have the small jaws, and everything is made out of plastic. Why do you need plastic when you can make the world out of amber? I think it's 10 minutes, Burning Knight. Where else would you be then? Back in Mefke, during the time of the revolution, the sidewalks and coffees are filled with young people. I was on my way to see a new boy date of picture starring Gabriel Bonguero. Until you come along, that is. Who's Gabriel Bonguero? This is Gabriel Bonguero. She shows you the photograph in the lavish amber frame. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you, his head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick, and his jaw, his, his jaw, the mo, mo, bit. He's got a good jaw. The man's got a holdover. Even 50 years later, you can he feel it. was the biggest it. start of his day. Gail used it to faint in the aisles of the cinema whenever he came on the screen. And a schoolboy used it to memorize all his lines. She leans back, savoring the world she's conjured up. In all likelihood, it's a world that's only ever existed in her mind. I take it you were in Mesk when you were young. Someone was. She nods as if though her meaning was perfectly clear. Someone, are they these are not your memories? memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? All right. They are beautiful. That is all that matters, beautiful and true. And they will win. They are coming for this, you know. All of this. 
She seems to derive some bitter pleasure from the strange thought as if the past will one day wipe the present away, like a tidal wave approaching. Sorry to interrupt your dreaming, ma'am. I ma wasn't dreaming. I was there, low man. It was early spring, and the mine me and the black sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Everything was golden. Her eyes narrow, and she appears to take your measure. While you people were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution. In that case, it was a golden age. What? What? Metke? What? How? How is that how you say that? Me Metke? The Republic of Metke is, is a massive confederation on the isla of Mundi, the world's largest state by territory. It's a Petra state, a constitutional monar monarchy, and as of recently, an outcast due to its tilt to the far right. I have some other questions for Why you. Why not, Rife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. She settles back against the railing of her motor lorry. Behind her mountains of memorabilia, photos and knickknacks line the dashboard. Elite Ghost! Thank you very much for the kind words of 32 months. Appreciate it. Welcome on back in. Thank you, thank you. What are you hauling? Diamonds, really? Wouldn't it be marvelous? What are you really hauling? Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry so you don't know what's in there? I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. What if it's contraband? Then it's contraband. You want me? You want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. I love that attitude. Lock me away like bad hand. Bad hand. Bad hand strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people just really like strangling people. I still don't really understand this whole Boydero Gabriel Benguero thing. Of course not. To truly understand, you need to listen to On the Western Plain. A Boydero, or a Boya for short, is a cow herder from up, upstream Magritte, the great steppes of northern Mezque. People like Manana at the gate have turned into, into, into an ideology of sorts. An old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring Boydero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the Western Plain. It doesn't happen, right? Of course not. The boy Darrow returns from the Western Plain, a changed man. A renewal. One Welcome night, back. he and his beloved are walking along the River Magritte. She pleads with him to give up his riding and settle Ooh. down. In the background, you can hear the orchestra swell as the screen fills with the maiden's imploring eyes. I think I see where this is going. So the boy Darrow strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Magritte. Then he rides off because the Western Plain is calling to him. I didn't think that was going to happen. You gotta understand, a true boy Darrow needs a whole horizon to himself to strangle a woman to. He can't be tied down. He, his beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a boy Darrow. Kill butt! Thanks for the two months. Appreciate it. Welcome on back in. Are you the lady driver? Did you just call me a lady, Sheriff? She clearly doesn't think she's a lady. Don't repeat it. I was told of a woman driver. You're the only woman here. I'm not that either gone too far from it all to remember what was between my legs. It doesn't work like that on the long haul. So you're not the driver everyone was afraid of? I'm only terrifying to small children. And to those who used to know me. Yeah, it's not her, believe me. Why are you scary to people who, knew, who used to know you? Because they no longer recognize the person I once was. Then who is the female driver I was told of? How should I know? Do I look like I spent a lot of time with the other Caminos? Do I have my movies to go to? Big ones. In the middle of this town, there's a ghostly motorway. It takes all the people to where they want to stay. In the background, a quiet song seeps from her cabin into the air. You don't hear any vocals. That's all I needed to know. Oh, Sim. The woman stares at you, her mind elsewhere now on other matters. Something is in her is pulling towards some unknown rest state. Show me the soles of your boots. Now what do you want with an old woman's boots? Please help me out here, it's important. I think you should let me get back to the Gabrielle Bonguero. You're no Gabrielle. Gabrielle doesn't say please. She's wearing sturdy worker's boots made of black leather. Buckles run across. The sole is also made of leather. Now the other one, please. Just before Gabrielle, it was the coronation of Franco Negro. Now there was a real man. There's no aberration you can see. She puts the foot, the foot down. There's too many discrepancies in all this. Not boot related. That the coronation of his innocence, Franco Negro, which happened 500 years ago. What do you mean it was the coronation of Franco Negro? And then it was no more. I was no longer holding my father's hand. He was no longer descending the stairs, Ryle. The crowd had gone silent. 
Perhaps it was another sheriff who came and woke me up, looking at my boots, asking questions. Perhaps it was another one in this carnival. I don't remember. She says carnival. She gestures toward the empty square with the statue and the machines. All right. Before I came, you seemed away. She's just a distracted old woman. We should let her get back to her things. Should you drive a lorry? <laughs> Why is that, Lieutenant? She's not connected to anything. He doesn't want your frail mind caught up in something here. Something unconnected to the case, but connected this woman tuning or connected this woman tuning out like that. All right, let's we don't have to talk about that stuff. I don't have to ask her about drugs either. I am a little curious, but I feel offensive. All right, it's 10:30, so it's about time we can uh, call the library now. Finally. Let's go get that done. Yeah, no, I appreciate him, Aaron, on the side of caution. For sure, the potential for spoilers is so, so high in this game. We gotta be cautious. Oh, wait, yeah, no, we're going back to the car. That's right. That's where the radio is. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Uh, have you found out about the boots yet? Still waiting. Okay, uh, connect me to the library, please. Central Public Jamrock Library on the line. Already introduced you to their librarian. Connecting the call. How can I help you, officer? He sounds worried, yet ready to assist. This is how people get when the police call. I'm looking for any information that you can provide on Billy Majin. Majon, a reader. Give me a moment. I'll have to put, check our database. You can hear him fiddle with the printout. I found Billy Majon's home address. Is that all right? No phone number, unfortunately. They're too poor to have a phone line. All right, there it is. Cape Side Apartments. By the pier north of here, the big apartment buildings. You have any other information? He returned their last book a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Do you know someone who was? Marie? You remember a reader named Billy Majon? They returned a Tybalt book the other day. It was my colleague Marie. She says it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Lose Radio City 87. You have a name now. So Billy Majon is a woman, not a man? How did your colleague know that it was her husband? Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. How did we not know it was a gay couple? Huh? A little bit of assumption on the part of the uh, uh, hobo art cop here. He goes for a little drink later on the lookout. Do you know the husband's name? Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Can Marie describe to me how the husband looked? Uh, an older man, and she's pretty sure he had a drink or two the last time she saw him. One second. Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. All right. Cool. Happy we could help. Cool. Good. Good, good, good. That's good info. Let's head to the pier, then. Sounds like a good idea. Since there's not a lot else we can do here. I could try to talk to them again. Maybe this will be different now. This palm tree livery should be, like, pastel green. Fucking tropic shit. He gazes dreamily at Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor I carriage. I see it. Bright as day. Ugh. I think we need to approach this later on. My authority guy told me to do this on our own terms. So I'm thinking maybe later on in the day something different will be going on with that. Uh, pier north of us, right? So hold on, let me have a look at the map again real quick. So that's probably up here, I guess? Maybe, well, I gotta go talk to Joyce again anyway, so I might as well head this way. Might as well. One of these days I'm gonna get this wall to talk to me. Reveal its secrets. Oh, you know, it might be this person. Well, I'm not sure I can actually even reach at any point, but I can oh, talk to. Officers. Have you come to admire my mural? No, I haven't. Sorry. Turns out I came to ignore you and talk to Joyce, which was my plan before, I suppose. Alright, I finally talked to all of them. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Oh, apparently I haven't. There must be someone in an overlooked position near the gates. 
Well, that's Manana. I guess I gotta go ask Manana about who I haven't talked to. Well, son of a bitch. I'm just running around in circles like a freaking moron. Uh-oh, you freaking moron. You got jingled. Well, come on back over here, then. We'll go talk to Manana on the gate, overlooking everything, and he'll tell me about the lorry driver that I failed to talk to, and then hopefully we'll be able to proceed from there. Kim's getting a good workout today, at least. I'm sure he's thrilled with that. I'm sure he's so excited to be sprinting around town all day long with me. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Apparently, this is not who I need to talk to. Okay, so I'm just confused now. Because I thought for sure that it was recommending that I talk to the guy that's overlooking the place, which would be Manana. So, I guess I just go back down. I'm going to talk to the three that I know of again. The three lorry drivers that I'm aware of. I definitely talked to him. Looking for something, Aunt? Huh? Coming to tell me to fuck off again? Where's the lady driver? First, you knew C. Lang didn't do it. He did something. He stole his employer's goods and another lorryman's job. He's been expecting this. He's really puffed himself up. But why are you smirking? Listen up, fuckwits. You don't scare me. You cops don't run Revishal West. You don't run Martinez. You don't run anything. So who does? The lady driver? He means La Puta Madre. The legendary, and not in a good way, crime boss from Jamrock controls what is probably the most powerful organized crime outfit in Revishal West. Looks like the lieutenant has a plan. Let him do this. For a moment, the lorryman's silent, then he spits on the pavement. Cross your arms and nod. And I presume you're familiar with his peons? Yeah. They're his little bitches. He's got them all over his unions. Not just the unions, he has peons everywhere. Some say he even has them in the RCM. Dirty fucking peons who do anything for him. Multi-ethnic drug addicts. The lieutenant adopts a rodentine quality. Be cool, sire. He's getting into this. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Say nothing. You're not peons. You wouldn't be investigating a drug thing if you were. No, of course not. We're not peons. But if we were, and one of Madre's drivers were to be stealing from him, then it's a good peon's job to find out who that is. He's surprisingly good at this. Look at him lurching. It's not a hard job. It wouldn't take a long time. It won't make Padre Madre angry. But a stupid fucking racist is standing in the way, protecting this fucking thief. His eyes dart between you and the lieutenant. I'm not scared of you or the mob. I'm under the protection of the Lorryman and Carter's Guild. You seen that corpse in the ceramic armor there? The lieutenant points to the yard. Did his shitty little guild protect him? Nah, you wouldn't just leave him out there if you... He tries to light a fresh cigarette, but his hands are shaking now. The, sem the sentence simply ends. The lieutenant turns and gives you a barely perceptible nod. I've, soft I've softened him up as best I could. Now it's on you to finish the job. This man's still got some fight in him by the looks of it. It won't be easy to break him. I gotta go fuck yourself from him. Half light. Well, this is gonna be tough to do, apparently. Half light. I don't know if I've ever even seen that before on us. On anything we've ever gotten. Oh, there we go. I actually have a plus one bonus to it, I guess. I'm already wearing that, right? Oh, no, I'm not. Post nut clarity. Thanks for the 58 months on the pile. My god, appreciate it, dude. Hey, look, another bonus. Dude, plus two. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, there's a minus one from this blue coat that we're wearing. Oh, no, we don't have this on. Why is, it, why is it orange? Why are some clothing pieces orange? All right, well, that'll do. Plus two to half light. That works for me. Let's give it a shot. Looking for something, Aunt? Huh? Coming to tell me to fuck off again? Decent chance. The main thing is to not overdo it. Even when you're trying to scare someone, the most important thing is, how does it look on your resume? Why don't you just step outside for a little... <laughs> We're already outside. I've got the goods on you. The jig's up. Oh, yeah? What are those? You know, your, your goods. Is this some kind of homo thing? 
Uh, yeah, maybe it is. Okay, that's enough, detective. That's enough. We'll just have to ask someone else about the lady driver. Let's go. All right, we got to get a half-light check. I have not even looked at that. Let the body take control. Threaten people. We're going to be a ways away from being able to get that one, but we got to come back to the racist lorry driver at some point. Orange just means you haven't clicked on it before? Okay. All right, box of sunglasses is still available. I'm going to go take a check on that. Silhouette of Adon. Thank you very, very much. Welcome on into the pile the Twitch Prime subscription. Appreciate that, my friend. Because I took a conceptualization point, so the this should be reset. Sunglasses lasts a lifetime off. Definitely going to try to get the bonus here, too. Conceptualization. Gotta have something somewhere, right? There we go, dude. Bitchin'. Anything else? Nope. All right. Let's give it a go. The shine on those sunglasses lasts a lifetime. Of yeah. One hundred percent guaranteed. A pair of water blue shades. The writing on the left temple says "Sub Insulindic Rendezvous." The frame appears to be hand carved out of bone. Oh, very interesting choice, officer. Very high culture. For the first time, the street vendor's voice trails off as he watches you inspect the glasses. Magnus Strife! Thank you for the six months on the pile. Welcome on back in. Bear hugs if you got them, please. Appreciate the subscriptions, y'all. Thank you. This is how a sea monster sees the world. You've become a sea monster! Hairy, giant, hidden, and strangely tender at heart. All is blue. Alright, all right, but these actually make your vision worse. It's like literally being underwater. Yes, but they also make your soul quiver like jello. So deep. Wow, officer, you look so cool. The street vendor has picked up his pace again as you observe the world through deep sea tinted lenses. And they can be yours for merely three real. My regular customers have passed them all up because they've got no taste, but you found them. What about these, Kim? The lieutenant tits his, tilts his head back and steps back, eyes narrowed in a thorough examination. It's a case to him. You look like a musician. Like a blind musician, but you could do worse. Take them if you want. I'll take those cool, deep blue glasses. Nice. Thank you very much. Cool, man. Aw, oh, yeah. Give me those. Aw, oh, yeah, dude. I wish it gave, like, a slight blue tint to the entire world. That would be hilarious. Let me give another task check here. Stained glass window, that was... Where was that? I don't remember. Renee's another composure challenge. Map wall was... Yeah, I don't remember where that was either now. Damn it. A bunch of physical instrument challenges that I don't think I even want to try. Well... Let's see. What should I do right now? What should, I feel like we're kind of waiting on the confront the pigs thing. Oh, we could go to this, I guess. Yeah, let's go to Billy Majan's apartment. Uh, North Martinez apartment 20. So how the heck do we get there? It's in the north? How do we get up to the north area? Is that across the water lock, I wonder? These are all rhetorical, and I applaud your hesitance to tell me exactly where to go. You're all very strong and very brave members of chat. You're so good. Who's a good chat? Who's a good chat? Is it you? Is it, is it, is it good chat as you are? Um, that was the fourth trap. There we go. The one in Land's End far northeast of the Feld building, which I think we know the location of. Yeah, I think that's the one that we checked out where the father and son were talking. Which would be not too far away from where we are. So I think if we go north of here, past the kids. Yeah, I think it'll be somewhere over here. 
which this might be where we need to go for the apartment as well. Since, yeah, there was a little bit of a, uh, a residential area over here. There's also the church that we could check out again. We could go try to convince this woman to be evicted. Although I doubt she's going to be uh, very receptive to the idea. Let's go have another conversation with her, maybe. Yes, what is it? What if you didn't have to leave? I talked to Andre. He wants to make it work. I don't want to make anything work. You don't, you don't want to make anything work? Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. It's not the Enotic dance music that's made her bitter. It's the failure of Fortress Accident. Are you bitter because your radio game project failed? That's right. If we couldn't get our Velkins to happen, I don't want anything to, to happen ever again. There's not a trace of irony in her voice. She means it. There's a 92% chance that I get this. I'll be so salty if I don't. About your research. You mentioned earlier that it's not going very well. Maybe I could help you with something. No, I don't really need any help with the project. But if I could help you finish the project, then you wouldn't have to live in the church next to the Boom Boom anymore. Just think about it. She thinks about it, the glassy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. Bring me the game's offside copy from my old workspace if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory, and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. What's an offside copy, and why do you need it? It's a backup of my former employer's project, the radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory just like the one inside this radio computer. She make, she's making it extra simple for you. The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Why is it on-site if it's an off-site copy? Oh god, not this again. It's not on-site, it's in the basement, perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. Sounds like it's technically still on-site. And no taking it out outside the building wouldn't have protected it. No, taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the data loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. We clear? This is clearly a painful topic for her. Do you mean the studio of Fortress Accident in the Doom commercial area? You can get it in through the bookshop. Oh yeah, I've been there. Plassance, the bookstore lady, I've already been inside there. You might know the giant ice bear fridge in the building's cellar. The film is inside the fridge. Oh! She just told me, it's impossible to miss. You've been to the fridge and it wasn't in there. It said the off-site copy had been moved to a safer, safer place. A note from whom? It said it had been taken to a near nearby ice cream maker and this note was signed by someone named Solasla. Zawaswa, Zawasa. Of course. Our project lead Solasla Zawasa. God, he was always so hell-bent on keeping the copy somewhere safe and feature creep in the Valley of the Heads. Like it would have made a difference. The offsite copy was perfectly safe when the data loss happened. That data loss was anomalous. And the heads, I won't even go into the heads, millions of them. Go find that copy from the ice cream maker, will you? I found the ice cream maker, but couldn't get it open. It's completely frozen. This is getting ridiculous. Can't you just defrost it? Or I don't know, I don't know, just figure something out. There's a solution, but she doesn't want to hand it over to you yet. It's a thing, something she holds dear. Oh, by the way, we put a dead body in that fridge. Wait, what? Whose dead body? You know, we don't actually have to tell the entire world about the fridge. <laughs> Whose body is it? It's the body of a hanged man. And what is it doing in the fridge? Don't worry, I put it there temporarily. It's all part of an official police investigation. You put it there- you put a dead body inside the ice bear fridge? Yeah, that's what I said in the first place. Okay, very cool. Thanks for keeping me in the loop. <laughs> Please keep that to yourself. Why don't you go get the filament yourself? The bookstore lady hates me, says I'm part of the curse. Are you? Of course not. I don't have my keys anymore and she won't let me in. Why does she think that? Because she's from Martinez and people from Martinez have never ever seen a radio computer. She thinks it emits elemental evil. It's a bit biased, don't you think? No. She literally started praying for the higher powers when she first saw my Rem Civic. I'm not making this up. The lieutenant coughs like he's amused. Once I came in one morning only to find that my terminal was full of these strange trinkets and amulets. Looks like some Seminine magic. Alright. Oh! Hey! 
reaches behind the radio computer and hands you what looks like an oversized pry bar. Here's my Valsen multi-tool. Nice! It opens everything. Fuck yeah, dude. Alright, about the off-site copy. Just kidding, I have nothing else to talk about. Let's go use the new tool. Sweet, dude. Oh, cool, I can try this again. This is Dolores Day. I wasn't sure before, but this must be the DeLorean Church of Humanity in Martinez. You knew of this place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revishal's founding, 300 or so years ago by first-generation settlers, on the coast of an uninhabited archipelago. What else do you know? There used to be seven staved churches on the coast. They sept sores, they called them, the Seven Sisters. Only one remains, the rest were burned in the revolution or used for building materials. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. Except for her. I don't believe we'll find anything connected to the lynching here, but something else perhaps. A pang of guilt, the lieutenant is leaving something out. You know why it was abandoned? I have a theory. There was a police raid a while back, I heard the place was shot to pieces. Who conducted this raid? Well, your station was involved, I hear, although I can't be sure. How come a lieutenant isn't sure? These precincts... Three precincts were involved in the raid, and people say Precinct 41 was one of them. I guess I could have been here. I'm not saying you were. It was a clandestine operation. I don't know anything about it. Why it was conducted or who participated. I try not to pry, and I, I try not to pry into extra district matters. Hey there, Will. Yeah, I know. We took a shave today. All right. You'll not get information on a confidential operation from your station secretary, sec secretary just by calling. If you really don't remember, it might just be better to keep this one forgotten. Kim, are you a follower of DeLoreanism? Yes, we all are. Her name, body, and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are DeLorean in origin. Hmm. The woman looks by in silence, smiling enigmatically. I didn't think you were spiritual. It's not spiritual, it's constitutional. The DeLorean system does not demand faith, only accordance. All right. Ah, just the edges of the cracks sparkle in the dark. Couldn't get it that time. Okay. Damn shame, Matt. Let's try this again. If there's even anything going on here. I guess not. That sound is produced when you go in the center of all those. I don't know if there's anything else you can do with it, though. I don't think so. All right. So that's good. Let's go back to the ice cream maker, I guess, and get the filament out of the thing. Got our new multi-tool. Hopefully we'll be able to open some new paths for us. Let's also keep heading north, though, since I'm already up in this area. I kind of want to see whether or not the apartment that I was looking for is actually up here. Not to mention the fact that there was that trap that I could find over here, too, at some point. Hopefully. Let's keep going this way. The barrel has been recently discarded and smells of old fuel oil. The d detective looks even more broken without the mutton chops. Yeah, absolutely. The building before you housed the engine. Must have been a big one. I can't even read that. The chain trails off into the ocean to who knows where. An old door worn by elements guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. It's military, a service depot of some sort. Used to service what? The washerwoman mentioned a depot upon the coast. She said it was for moving ammo and cargo across the bay. This might be it. You can only do this one time. I know I've got my rubber gloves for interfacing. I don't think I've got anything else that can boost us from that, though. I just want to take some fucking speed. Yeah, I don't think I've got anything else for it. Hmm. Impossible check. I'm gonna hold off on that one. We'll come back to that. Large quantities of speed will solve all your problems. It's starting to feel that way. Hey, a shirt. A white polo shirt. Nice. And a little bit of money. Okay.
Hey, birdie! No fun. You take a mental note. To your motiri. Seems important somehow. I will remember that. I will remember that. Someone made a campfire here a long time ago. This is beginning to look like somewhere I should go. Too rusty to climb the ladder. Hey! A scented scarf! What the hell was that? Tiny inlets off in the far distance where the post trails toward. Something just crashed up on the shore, it sounded like. Alright, this is not yielding the results I was hoping for, sadly. Oh no, I'm still very much Hobo Cop. Hey, it's the other trap! Finally, you spot the last one. This one's partially obscured by the reeds. They sway in the coastal breeze waiting for something. The wind picks up here. It's cold for this time of year. Something is different here. No locusts! No phasmid either, but still. It's empty! Your voice echoes on the coast, carried by the gust of cold wind. The lieutenant studies the trap with you. Well, the bait worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster, though. Unless you see one in there, I just see an empty trap. The netting is a little untidy, messier than the others. Like someone or something picked up the tra trap and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. Hmm. I do get the feeling that someone messed with the trap. Perhaps our cryptozoologists have competition in the form of an actual entomologist. Or someone else is sabotaging them? I could present more theories, but then I would be taking this on as a case, which I'm not. Uh, it probably wasn't the phasmid, but still, Morel needs to know. We did sort of promise to tell them, didn't we? We did, and we're going to be good people about it. Kind of following the coastline here and really hoping just to find something. That apartment is eluding me. Oh, I've already been down here too, shit. Okay, hold on. Can we go any further that way then? I don't think so. I think we might have reached the edge. Indeed we have. Well, damn it. So that's that. I guess I gotta go this way. Oh man, this is this is a confusing area. There's like only one way to go through everything. That sound happened again up there. How the hell do we get out of here? How the fuck did I even get to this place? Can I go down this way? There we go. No, that's not it. This way. There we go. And then we can do this. There we go, there we go, there we go. Well, yeah, that didn't really yield exactly what I wanted. But we got something new. We can still go a little further this way, I think, as well. So of course, we check this out. This is, oh, this is the dock that leads up to the guy, though. So where is this going to go? This is going to take me down around this way. This is the Thawn building, I believe. Where the boy and his father were. And we cannot get down and around that, unfortunately. So, my goodness, man. Yeah, cardio, right? Here we go. At least we get a good jog out of things here. Uh, I don't think there's much else that we can do. I can have another look at this guy, but this isn't really going to help me right now. i got to find out how the heck to get to his apartment. Maybe I should actually... Oh, shit. The body's gone. Did they... Oh, maybe... Since Kim called it in, maybe they just took it for processing, but... Did they? Hmm. Oh, well. Kim has no ambition. I know, he won't take all these good cases with us. Yeah, no, it is, it's a little tedious to have to 
run around like this. There's no like fast travel or anything, but I kind of appreciate that at the same time. For the kind of game it is. All right, well. Shit, man. Let's see if this has anything else to do. Life is garbage. Sure is. Dial the number again. Oh, no. You want my money? Punch the phone. The cold metal is hard. And your knuckles. You look at them turning purple. You want more money now, huh? You want my fucking money? Punch the phone again. Save yourself before you die. It didn't give you any fun for that money. Your hand is turning blue now. Blood drips to the ground. Blood drips from your knuckles to the sand. Bent metal, broken glass. Your path lies strewn with the broken forms of everyday objects. You are the destroyer, the bane of inanimate matter. Gaze upon me, stuff and despair. Anti-object task force. Take a look at your hands. See how bruised they are? See those little scars? This is exhibit A. The material world is holding you back. Containers, mailboxes, doors, chairs. These are all your enemies. Always have been. Atoms themselves are in on the conspiracy, forming shapes and structures that you hate. You are an energy stuck in the body. You are a spirit trapped in matter. Break free. Beat up that lamp post. Let it know just how much objects suck. Fuck yes. All right, Kim. The writing is exceptional, absolutely. Kim, where are we going, pal? I don't know where the hell this apartment is I'm supposed to find. I'm just gonna wander for a bit, man. Does that sound good to you? Kind of curious about this. this. I've been here before too. No, yeah, this isn't. This is nothing of import. Are your gloves bloody now? We should look. Doesn't look like it now. That would be funny though. Hmm. Where the hell am I running now? It's the only way to get to that point, huh? I don't think there's much else for me to do on this left side right now. I think I should probably go talk to Titus or the Union boys, I guess. That seems like the wisest course of action at the moment. Yeah, this doesn't feel like it's getting me anywhere. All right, let's go do that. What a point in the case. Well, I got my badge back, and I'm trying to get my gun back. That's kind of where we're at right now. Those are the big primary things. We've sent the body back to the station for processing. Kim's already returned from that trip. And, uh... Where the hell am I? The gun and the badge will be in the last place you look. Yep. Right, yeah, we're talking back and forth with the Hardys, exactly. I don't think there's anything I need to do with the pawn shop. Let's just go ahead and get back in here. All right, here we go. Hopefully we'll be able to pro progress a little bit. This feels like I've reached a bit of a uh, bit of an impasse of how to proceed. I should be able to talk to a couple of people in here and get some stuff going on. The clowns are still hanging around. What is it now? I've listened to the tape. I'm going to f confront Klausia with it. Smart boy, you go do that. All right, apparently that's what I'm going to do. I've got nothing to say to you. Why, Why are you, are you so aggressive? Your time? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are dock workers. So you were spying on us, and now you represent murder suspects. We'll talk to Everard Claire. We know who these men are, the Union's militant wing. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob enforcing the unfa unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all, and you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah, the tall, broad-shouldered man takes a sip of his beer. So ask what you came for, ask what you came to ask, or get back to your command commandeers. Hmm. 
Let's do that. Let's ask those questions. The RCM is principled and strong, unlike you socialists. Get sober, do your job, ask your questions, and get the hell out of Martinez. All right. This, I believe we've done. The window checkup completed. Hey, he's back! A woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today starts in a, man, a man's handwriting. Boy, am I ever so grateful to you, officer. But I'm not the only one who wants to thank you. I'll talk to her then. It's great to see you again, officer. My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on, talk to her. Nah. Nah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just being stupid. Oh, sweetie. I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. I'm basically also a cryptozoologist now. I knew it. You hear Kim say quietly to himself. I'm not surprised it's already getting out of hand. Well, in that case, sweetie, let me give you a small token of my gratitude. It's a Thai mask in origin. The pin is an antique, quite special to the cryptozoological community. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. You could ask her about this when you get the time. It's probably a cryptid. But the phasmin, of course, is more important. Great. That's done, I guess. I gotta tell them about the traps, uh -huh. right? Nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, what can I do for you? He tries to play it cool, but inside this man is itching for some news on those traps. Uh, one of them was empty. There was nothing in the trap. No locusts, no phasmid. Or no locusts, but no phasmid either. That's not ideal, but... Just means the Insulindian Phasmid is even more clever than we thought! Of course! More clever. Yes, the Phantasmodia picked off the Locusts and escaped! This is good news! But we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps and make them more secure. Another trip to the reeds. That's exactly what it is. What a deft hunter this Phasmid. Be sarcastic. Unless you have an alternative hypothesis you'd like to venture, mine stands, okay? Actually, no. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now and brought some good news, too. My gratitude and the gratitude of the Society Cryptozoologique de Revachol is yours. Heartfelt gratitude, but it does feel like clo- but does it feel like closure? Thank you, it's an honor, says Kim. We should probably return to our main investigation here. Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, isn't it? The lieutenant looks out the window impatiently. <laughs> Holy shit. 97% chance. Develop an alternative theory about the missing locusts. I, I have a feeling it might be Kuno. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed as though shaken. Most likely the hands of a young person, hands small enough to fit inside the trap. You should ask Kuno. A little hooligan, but what would a child want with bugs? Oh, my dear Morale, you've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. Delinquents, my favorite. Please let us know whatever you... Uh, turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Let's play Sue's Rain to you, but no more field trips for me. This is your last chance to talk to Gary. You're not getting anywhere with some kids. I know the little mutant around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it, even if it's bugs. It's been fun, really. This tea is done. I've got to run. You've been more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's Rain to you today, though. We're gonna follow this through. The first man to break formation is always a blow to leadership. This is bigger than he lets on. Well, we gotta go talk to Gary then. Generous of you to help us out, officer. I'm sure glad to be back from that little excursion. Indeed. Yellow man. I, I mean, officer. You were surprised to see my colleague Kitsuragi. Not many sailites here or anywhere other than Seoul. I mean, no offense, truly. You have a problem with them? No, no, no problem at all. The lieutenant, uh, what are they? Uh, I don't think those all matter. Okay. Uh, I Wait guess there's. I mean, officers. I guess there's nothing else to do with him. Yeah, why is everyone so racist? Garte, what do you think about all this? Was there something you needed? About my. No, I don't need to talk about my bill for tonight. Let's, ch let's talk to Vic Mare again. Again. I can't believe this shit. Kim, who is this guy? I'm not getting involved in this, he says. <laughs> God damn it. Yes? What is it? 
I bet you liked that, didn't you? Let's be honest. That was some first-rate karaoke. Okay, yeah, that was pretty good. No, 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 no. That was, these are universal standards of good, and that was just complete shit. Jean, he's not right. Treat him like you'd treat McCoy's little brother. <laughs> Lieutenant W. Freighter John Archetype McCoy's younger brother Lance McCoy, although a man of 32 years, will never mentally surpass a six-year-old. John, Lance, who are these people? No idea, just passing on information stored in your fractured neural cortex. From within your mind haze, you hear the end of a sentence. I'm not going to pretend like he's got a learning disability. I'm standing right here. Yes, and I'm wondering why. Do you have a case to solve? Yes, did you want something from me? Are you? Are we or are we not from the same police station? God damn it, leave her alone. Keep your weird bullshit to yourself and be professional. Uh, all right, are you with him? He seems like a cool guy. Seems he's a sack of shit barely kept together by crazy glue, but at least he tries, unlike you. Oh, rude. Okay, then. We still got a ways to wait until the nightfall, unfortunately, so. I don't know, man. Let me look at the lists again. Oh, Classier. Why did I leave? We gotta go talk to Classier. We gotta go confront her about the tape. Oh, and uh, Kuno. So we have two things to do. Classier and Kuno. So I'm not lost at all. Everyone's mad at me, man. I don't know. I, what's, I didn't do anything to offend anybody. All I did was go on a massive uh, alcohol bender and destroy half the town. What's wrong with that? Everyone's gotten into a little bit of trouble every now and then. All I did was take my motor carriage and plow it into the river. It's fine. Totally normal behavior. Oh, Classier. There was an interesting tape we played that is not incriminating of you at all. Officer. It's a fine day for questions. Uh, although apparently there's no way I can talk to you about this. Oh, did you know that led to a downstairs elevator? I did not. Mystery solved then. Uh, there was a peephole on the other side looking into your bedroom. You mean like a hole in the wall? Yeah, looking into your bedroom. Okay. The jitter of fear and disgust moves through her body, beginning from her shoulders and ending in her hips. You think this is somehow connected to me? It could be connected. Do you know of any way of knowing how long it's been there? Unfortunately, no, but long enough. The perforation is under the bookshelf on your wall. It should not be hard to cover with some tape. If it is recent, who do you think made it? Maybe it's been there for a long time. Maybe the local kids use it for something. I'll be fucking covering it up with a lot of tape, that's for sure. There were recent tracks on the floor. She's straight as a stick suddenly. Out of the Hunakonga! This is the 31 months on the pile, buddy. Appreciate it. It's an old pinball workshop. A room back there used to be a pinball arcade. I'm glad someone's had fun. Good. She's lost in thought. That window's new. She moves slightly to your left to check her reflection in it. He finds the answer unsatisfying. Uh, a few more comments about that door. That's all for now. Uh, what are you doing in here? Wintering, blah, blah, blah. Understood. Uh, drug collection is nothing, I don't think. No further with that. Other questions. Let's talk more about the assault. There's nothing more with that. Uh, they have a recording that proves the deceased intention to commit rape. It sounds like the boys would have preferred my saying it did happen. I think we already did this one, didn't it? I think we already did, yeah. Oh, right, no, we got to this point and then we uh, hadn't heard it yet. Uh, unfortunately, it's completely busted. I've listened to the tape, though. I bought the thing and I listened to the tape, right? I'm pretty sure we already did that. So why is the... Oh, I did it without Kim. That's right. Okay, I gotta play it again with Kim here. Got it. That's the sound of a convulsing crane. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. The lieutenant presses the button marked out of tail on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. Welcome to the bear. L N E. L N E. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the Twitch pile. No, welcome to the bear pile. That's what it is. Thank you very much for your Twitch Prime sub as well. 
silence at the end of the recording. What do you think? Seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off their shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. Sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. He also sounded inebriated. Still, you're familiar with this look. It's his look of suspicion. There's more going on here. Who's this Cordy? One of the other mercenaries, a friend of his. What's Lee Schmin? The village on the Samara Nisula in TNN. Grad committed war crimes there. Maybe just the tattoos would be an answer, or maybe Lee Schmin is just murk talk for atrocity. A symbol of soldier of apocalypse style conduct in a civil environment. I think we've got a few more questions. This seems to contradict her testimony. Okay, there we go. We moved that up. We can have new options with her again, more than likely. Fine day for questions. The deceased states he intends to commit rape. Well, thank you, Dibs. Appreciate it. That's very kind of you. The soft ring is the porcelain that meets the metal table. She puts her coffee down. This does not surprise her. Did he? A smile flits across her face. I never said he was a good man or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. She doesn't care. If anything, she sounds amused. On this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. Where did they get this recording exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via de the encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's going to do it soldier of the apocalypse style? Those are the exact words he used. Yeah, that was practically his pickup line. She picks the coffee cup back up. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it Leishman style? Leishman was mentioned. He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little Leishman. It was his everything. Why say things like that? Machismo? Was he bragging? Oh no, I'm pretty sure he did all those things, then integrated them into his idea of normalcy to keep on living until they just sort of turned into his... What's the word I'm looking for? Coping mechanism. Running joke. I was going to say running joke, and it sounds like he didn't even get the good bits. Laylee's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. Later on, Alonso. He was like the Seminese conflict, the Leishman massacre, and the 36th famine, and Yusut all rolled into one person, then cast in orange ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. Weren't you afraid? Afraid of what? The tape the Hardy Boys recorded? Your mother probably never told you this, but girls are evil. Had I the physical robustness and social support, I'd be in Leishman. I would be tearing it up social of the... I would be tearing it up soldier of the apocalypse style. Did he tell you we had any actually done any of those things here in Martinez? No, we were too busy laying waste our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. What kind of man was he? Before you go, ask for details. Whenever you're ready, I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. Can you tell us more about the victim? I didn't know his name. I just called him Laley. A nickname? It came from Lelestad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Lelestad. That's a good start. The lieutenant writes it down in his notebook. He tears out a page and hands it to you. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can't answer. The young woman cranes her neck trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink. The last pieces, or the last missing pieces is a, of a puzzle of flesh. Where is Lelestad? An Aranye officer. A municipality is the term? A nowhere town near there. The Leylestad municipality has few boroughs and even fewer cities. You were almost right, officer. That means his race was Occidental, not Mondial. You were both from Aranye? They're compatriots. No, he was too old for that. And for another part of... I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together wasn't Aranye, it was bad habits. No love for Mother Oranya? But it wasn't he a soldier? This could be worth pursuing. A military man, but not a patriot. He left the National Service after they taught him to do what he did on Seminen. He, was, he wasn't the flag-waving kind. He was the making-money-killing-people kind. He was by no means a stupid man. She takes a long drag of her cigarette, then washes it down with coffee. A people person, a small platoon leader, certainly not a patriot. You certainly don't look much like a patriot yourself. There's nothing on Monday. The old, old world is dead, and we both knew it. 
Maybe Aranya did bring us together in loathing. I love Ravishal too. Or though. She looks around, the wind in her hair. I hope she loves me too. How old was he? 42. 42, are you sure? I would have had him above 50. He had many scars that made him appear older, but no. The memory makes her smile. We even celebrated his birthday like some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Looks like you were right, officer. Didn't know this was a competition, Kim. It isn't. It's a cooperative sport. Well, that's beautiful to hear. This is clearly sports for him. Something like archery or darts. Dave Guy! Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. It's still not about getting hits right and not missing. It's too pinball for me. I just like to get autopsies right on the first try. Or were we? He's lying. <laughs> His eye color? Blue, light blue. Like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth. Yeah, severe. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. His hair, if you can remember, was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made it oily. Not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. Interesting. I, too, have stroked his hair. Oily, isn't it? She seems unfazed. <laughs> we have that in common now. She understands what autopsies entail. It doesn't get her off balance. Cam, I said to put the Brilliante on the form. Do I get a point? No. But I, I put it down there. I can see you've put quite a few things here. They don't all give you a point. <laughs> there it is, and you're rushed writing right where the lieutenant is pointing. Fucky fuck. You should really get this questioning back on track now. What did it represent? Do you know? It was a map of his life and the places he visited as a soldier. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. Imagine him lying in bed, freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course, tattooed. Is this, Orange, is this Orange's lit? Yes, it's the very essence of Orange's lit. A moment's respite. A chance to steal oneself from the coming horrors. She leans even further back to demonstrate. He's smoking and drinking, of course, and his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with, studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them, maybe even thousands. And this, the woman goes like, what was this, baby? And he says, that was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, saw some bad shit there. Killed some loincloths. And so it goes, star after star, port after port, third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. Can you, t can you tell us precisely what these mean? I don't think, I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at him. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms from a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Orania needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer for money. He went to Killer Academy in Redfort, and he killed some people in the Seminan Islands and on other islands, too. After this, he came to Revishal and got himself killed. Not a very fun story. It is when you're high. It can be very exciting, then. You have the tools to deal with it. It's not a very nice story to remember when you're sober. Do you enjoy his death? Why do you ask? It's just a feeling I have. Indulge me. Well, it's wrong. He had too many drinks to down and too many bad things to do. Couldn't tap out just yet. Everything checks out here. It's all A-OK. -okay. Good answer. I can't trust drama with her. So she's lying. Could it be that love did him in? What do you mean? What do I mean? I have no idea. I don't even know what you mean. Love did him in? What does that mean? He told me love did him in. That's not funny, officer. Her voice is like a slash through the air. Her shoulders tense up. She momentarily lost control over straight back guy. It appears that she feels guilty. You feel guilty? Of course I do. I'm hung up. I'm hung over. I feel guilty about everything. Do you feel guilty about what happened to him? Among many other things, yes. I could have done something. There's always something you can do, right? Ask me something else. Was this an interrogation? You didn't say this was going to be an interrogation. We requested a semen screening for processing. Good for you. 
What do you think it will tell us? I don't know how a semen sample works, officers. How many days after intercourse does it have to be... I don't even know if we had sex with someone else. Or if he had sex with someone else. We didn't go steady. Is she avoiding anything? Technically not. Come on, man. You can't trust them. It's just you and me, says Volition. I think we're finished with this line of questioning. The lieutenant puts the slip back in his notes and observes the young woman for a moment. She pours herself more coffee, coolly, gracefully. That, that man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? That's what she said, yeah. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of mortality. He was 42 years old? How old were you? That's where this is going. 45,000 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. What lies beneath, you wonder? You could ask either one of them. Kim, how old do you think I am? Huh? How old do I look? How old? 58. Oh, God, that's really old. Really? You asked me. You were wrong about the deceased, too. He was way younger. He was deceased. He'd been decomposing for a week. I feel like I've been decomposing for longer than that. <laughs> the ravages of Al Ghul are nearly as extreme as that of death itself, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Sure, you're 42. Let's go. <laughs> this requires scientific measurements. I'm not afraid of the truth. To the laboratorium! Your face looks like it's 58 and your body looks like it's 60. Your mind feels like it's lived for one more day or a hundred. Both longer than they ought to be, the day and the century. But for how long then has this thing attached to your sentience walked the Earth's crust? Time to start racking those brains of yours, Elder One. When and where were you born? Dude, I'm willing to do that. Data birth generator. Internalize. Done. Okay. So, my mouth is drying out and I'm stumbling over words here. We've gotten another good few hours into disco. Oh, I love that pose. Keep that up, Harry. That's a good look, man. I'm going to go ahead and take another pause for the day. Go get myself some lunch and also do some other work that I need to do. Thank you 